Este episodio está patrocinado por nuestros compas de Casa Humilde Cervecería. Cerveza artesanal, elaborada aquí en Chicago, with a variety of 10 different styles to choose from. Casa Humilde is located at the District Brew Yards, 417 North Ashland in Chicago. Follow them on IG and like them on Facebook at Casa Humilde Cervecería. To check availability near you, go to www.casahumildechicago.com and check out the store locator. You could also pick up some chelas at the District Brew Yards. Casa Humilde Cervecería. Stay humilde. This WalkPod episode is brought to you by Borja's Law Group. El abogado Borjas contestará todas tus preguntas, explicará el proceso específico de inmigración que aplica en su caso, el tiempo que se toma procesar su caso y los costos asociados con las tarifas de inmigración y los honorarios legales. Llama al 312-788-2783 para programar tu cita. Y ahí de pasada, menciona el WACPAR para que te den tu consulta gratis. Este episodio está patrocinado por Tequila Tres Generaciones. At Tres Generaciones, we honor those driven to create something greater than themselves, those who have what it takes to leave a legacy. It's a tequila for the strivers, the hustlers, the champions of free will who create their destiny and don't await it. El proceso es único. It begins with fresh pressing agave, extrayendo el jugo antes que lo cocinen, resulting in reduced bitterness and a crisp agave forward flavor. Todo el tequila is triple distilled. Using 100% Blue Weber Agaves. Con el tequila blanco, con el tequila reposado, it's certified organic. Aquí en el Wackpad, cuando hacemos un brindis, it has to be tequila tres generaciones. Celebrate responsibly. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021 Salsa Tequila Import Company. Chicago, Illinois. El Wackpad is brought to you by your friends from Stitchin Studio. They are a 100% family-owned business that dedicates itself to fulfilling their customers' custom embroidery needs. They're a one-stop marketing shop for all your apparel needs. He transfer vinyl, screen print t-shirts, or every type of hat for your business or sporting team. Sports bags, and to make matters better, they help you establish your brand, be it in the music business or personal business. They're here to make it happen. Go follow them on Instagram at Stitchin Studio and like them on Facebook. For any questions, price quotes, just tell them that the Wackpot sent you at 773-418-4484. And also, AMG. Aguacate Music Group is your one-stop shop for all your music needs. Cuenta con todos los servicios de música en vivo, DJs, iluminación, pantallas, photo booths, and more para tu próximo evento. For all the musicians out there, AMG also offers graphic designs, photo shoots, live videos, and rehearsal rooms. So go like them on Facebook at Aguacate Music Group or on IG at Aguacate Records. You can call and book your next session at 773-301-9083. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Su compa Carlos Rodríguez. What's up, everybody? Yo soy Jesse, el grandote. What's good, what's good? You guy Fry from File Guy Designs. Hell yeah. How are you? This is going to be the extra guac part two. Este, everyone's a, a little bit literary because uh, my boy Jesse se le oh. ponchó una pinche llanta. Y era la llanta de acá de esta barriga. Because usually I have like four llantas, pero se ponchó una aquí de la barriga. Bro. We're, 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 uh, we're pretty excited. We're very happy to, uh, to, to uh, do this extra guac episode. Um, porque nos toca a alguien que, que you know, tiene muy buena ese, trayectoria en todo lo que es the communication field with the radio, with the TV. Uh, my boy Jesse can do a better introduction. I, I, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to talk to this yes. one individual right yes. here because not from, uh, he, he's been in the radio industry. He's been in the radio industry since 1996. Right here, if I'm not, or if 98. No, ya te pasaste como 20 años. No, 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 no
but I'm excited. I'm excited because I worked alongside him <laughs> yeah. at Univision Radio. Yes. Uh, we started together with an uh, urban radio station here in Chicago. Yes, pues we did. Estamos listos para hablar uh, sobre su historia. And not just because he's in, no, you're not in a grupo, right? <laughs> that we not know yet, of. not yet. <laughs> Pero este, este, we're just excited to talk about your story, your radio life, because aparte de, de nomás así, the music industry, hablas con muchos artistas, hablas con los oh, artistas yeah. locales, yeah. internacionales, and we're happy to hear your story, man. So welcome, welcome. A ver, la, compa Carlos. La, ahora, la sí. muy buena bienvenida para el buen amigo Omar Ramos, compa. Hey. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I already know a couple. So it's Omar. I mean, Ramos, what you know about me? What you know about me? They, they say Omarcillo. <laughs> yeah. And then the ones that a lot of people don't know, El Gilguerillo. El Gilguerillo. I just yeah. found out about that. Right. Puro Michoacán, yeah, yeah. primo. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, where do I start, man? So, yeah, Omar Ramos. Well, actually, my full name is Esgar Omar Ramos Sapien. God damn. Yeah, I think my mom was tripping, dude, when I was born. <laughs> she was like, pues que le pongo a mi hijo, no? Esgar, I don't know where they, that came from, because everybody thought it was Edgar, but yeah. my mom called me Esgar. Oh, shit. And just... then Omar, Omar comes from este, I guess she had a crush on some kid in high school. <laughs> that his, his name was Omar, right? And then she ended up uh, marrying a guy named Ignacio, which is my dad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ramos, it's... from my dad's side, y Sapien de mi abuelo, que en paz descanse. So, you know, when he, when Facebook started, and that's how far, how long we go back when Facebook My started. Space, wait, no much is going. He added, me on, <laughs> he added me on Facebook. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Who, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah. Omar. But I'm like, somebody, uh, somebody tr like hacked your account and yeah. added me. <laughs> no, pues, yeah. I mean, we have a long, when it comes to uh, Jesse and I, man, we have a uh, some history going on. Obviously, he started with us uh, in the, I think you were tech, right? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, so, Oscar one tech. Right. Yeah, because I remember that because there was this one time we worked together at a uh, car lot place and you were like stressing the hell out because something went wrong. <laughs> Pero este, Jesse, you've always been a very hard worker, man, um, uh, overachiever, and you've always pushed forward to get everything done that you've wanted to do in your life, man. And obviously, we worked together for a while. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Y pues aquí andamos echándole, macheteándole, como dice mi papá. It's crazy how, how well, like, everybody's path, you know, what I've, known, what I've known in this uh, industry is uh -huh. de que siempre la, los caminos cruzan, aunque se desvíen. But sometime in life, we, we cross paths regardless of one, one yeah. another. So, you know, I haven't been in radio since 2016 or something. Yeah. But todavía estamos aquí. And you know what? <laughs> I've never forgotten about you, dude, yeah, because you know right. why? Because every time I go to a quinceañera, <laughs> the DJ that's playing. DJ. DJ. Fulano de tal. No, wait, dude, that's Jesse's voice, man. I can't get rid of this dude. That freaking Chiva lover. Oh, yeah, that's him. That's him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> ¿Por qué crees que tengo la barba aquí? Yes. Ah, bueno, ok. So, right, right. <laughs> hoy, hoy Thanks vamos, for having me, man. Hoy vamos a hablar un poquito de todo, bro. Vamos a hablar, este, obviously, uh, para pa la gente que nos está viendo YouTube y escuchando en, en, en Apple Podcast, Spotify. Um, Omar comes into the category of the non-musician and, and what it is, the guac pot um, breakdown. Pero vamos a hablar de lo que, la vida de radio. Yeah. Um, the ins and outs, the, los artistas. And, and then also, we talked a little bit about how you're, you're a sports voice now, like you. You know, that's you. You hit every Chicago sports team, I believe, right now. Yeah, right? yeah, right now. That's what I'm uh, blessed, I guess, uh, to do at this time and moment. And it's based on the experience that I've had working with the uh, the White Sox, you know, with the Chicago Cubs, uh, working with the Chicago Bulls, uh, the Chicago Bears, uh, Chicago okay, Fire, as of last year. Um, and and coming up pretty soon, um, we'll be doing something very special with the uh, Chicago Red Stars, I believe, in. And supporting our female, uh, That's a female soccer, as well. Right? Yeah, it's uh, Chicago yeah. Red Stars. Yeah, the pro nice. team. Wow. Son las chicas de lo que es la Liga Femenil Profesional. On the 25th of September, we'll be doing a live broadcast on oh, nice. Unimas and uh, simulcasted on TUDN, which is very, very, very special to me and a lot of my colleagues. Why? Because, for example, I, I grew up with uh, three sisters, uh, two of them now. Este, y también tengo una hija de 15 años. So I've always wow. been you know, very supportive when it comes to nuestras mujeres. And this opportunity came up, so we'll be doing that with uh, the Red Stars as well. What about that baseball team, the Chicago Hot Dogs? Or the uh, Chicago Dogs? Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. No, that was just a first pitch opportunity that I had, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? We've uh, reached out to them, and they're doing some great things out there in Rosemont for sure. Yeah, so. Eso, oh, eso. Shit. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, uh, nos mantenemos ocupados. You know, I live here in Chicago on my own. Uh, my daughter lives with 
their mom out in the burbs. But I'm out in Bridgeport right now, and I just stay busy, man. I mean, I've, I, it's something that I've always done ever since I was a kid. I remember my dad telling me, quítate las manos de la bolsa, ponte a hacer algo, you know? Yeah. And it's always been kind of like that. He molded me to be that way, just to kind of stay active, doing stuff. And it's helped me in, in many aspects, especially during this uh, pandemic times. You know, a lot of people kind of crash emotionally, mentally and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. me ha mantenido... Siempre soy una persona muy ocupada, always busy doing something, and I've always been, you know, a, a sports fanatic, so I've been very blessed to do what I do. Yeah, so so I'm very uh, a big fanatic of origins, so yeah. I'm glad you brought up um, your your family background because yeah, well let's start there because I, I we did talk a little bit right before um, about uh, you guys are originally from California or you are as yeah you know, yeah you're born and raised there yeah I was born in. Uh, little town called Tulare, California. Tulare. Tulare. Okay. And it's right outside of just north of Fresno in between Bakersfield and Fresno. It's una comunidad pequeña campesina. My parents uh, migrated there back in the day. They're originally from the uh, Sierra Coast of Michoacán, which is the part of Michoacán that connects with the ocean. So we share land with the indigenous community called Los Purepechas. Nice. And uh, my parents are from that region. It's called Cualcomán, Michoacán. Qualcomán. It's about two hours uh, from Colima, la capital, Colima, Colima. Mm. Um, so yeah, back in the day, being from that region, man, if you don't have the money to go to Morelia and like become a doctor or dentist, you got to do something, right? So yeah. my parents decided, ya que son gente de campo, de rancho, uh, let's go to the other rancho life on the other side of the border. And they went out to California, El Valle de San Joaquin. Um, they started doing what everybody else before them, the Bracero community, right before them, work in the fields because uh, nobody else was doing that job and the Italians and the Portuguese needed La Fuerza Laboral Mexicana to uh, right. cultivate their uh, almendras, duraznos, uh, cebollas, manzanas, chavacano, and all that. So I was born in that community. That's what I knew as a kid. Um, I, I went to school in the Modesto, California area, in the Fresno area, in the Farmersville area. And uh, there's a chiquillo, man. I just, uh, I was... I grew up around music because I have some tios that are musicians okay. and also baseball. I was a big Oakland A's uh, fanatic. Uh, grew up being a big Jose Canseco fan. The funny thing is that <laughs> everybody yeah, everybody thought that guy was Mexicano, right? Because yeah. he was like the only Mexican guy. Yeah. The he looked like Mexicano, yeah. right? But yeah. little did we know, era de Cuba, el vato. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. My, Wait, he was Cuban? Yeah, no. yeah. I know, right. I was I was like, man, I could have swore that guy was from Jalisco, uh, man, because it was like the, the white-looking kind of Mexican. Texas, maybe Monterrey, you know, because yeah. they had that mullet going, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he did have the mullet going on. Pero este, so my dad only had money uh, to buy his Oakland A's tickets because that was the cheaper ticket versus right. the San Francisco Giants. That was his favorite team. And it, it always kind of burnt me in a way because uh, él quería ir a ver a los gigantes de San Francisco, el estadio que compartían con los 49 de San Francisco back then, like which Candlestick at Candlestick Park, Park yeah. yeah. But you know what? He he did what he could for us, and that's how we grew up. My sisters and I, big Oakland A's fans, uh, we grew up in that in that region. Nos quedaba como una hora, más o okay. menos, from where we were from. So we grew up around baseball. We were a big baseball community, uh, familia. It was like half Oakland A's and half Dodgers, uh, thanks to uh, Fernando Valenzuela and yeah, all that. Talk, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I did I did my schooling uh, based around sports and farm working, dude. I grew up uh, raising. Uh, can I say this right? Yeah. Can, I, can I say sure. everything? Here? So I I, I I grew up raising gallos de pelea. Oh. Yeah. Damn, Wait, I didn't know you were going to go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I did that because that's what I did. I took care of gallos de pelea, man, as a kid. That's how I made, like, I, I had money in my pocket doing that kind of stuff. Uh, también creaba chivos. I had chivos. Um, I, I should have done the pajarete thing, but back then I, I didn't like, like, ordeñando. So Tomás los creaba los vendía. But, uh, yeah, my life was around animals, man, and uh, German Shepherds. My dad only allowed me to have German Shepherds uh, as a dog, que, que son excelentes uh, animales. So, yeah, yeah, I grew up, man, um, went to school in uh, Fresno. I mean, went to school in Modesto for two years, played baseball. Um, then I went out to Fresno. Este, hice mis estudios para prepararme eh, con, académicamente. Um, I studied mass communications and journalism. Um, then I needed, to, like I was telling you earlier off air, uh, yeah. that I met uh, Rafael Bautista, el, 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 primo. Afamado, el primo Rafa. ¿Cómo está yeah. Primo? <laughs> yeah, so that was part of a project so I could uh, get some um, internship credits. 
And I'm trying to get everything like in a nutshell here for yeah, you guys. Yeah, Pero yeah. este, yeah, he was the one that pretty much put me on the map, man. He gave me an opportunity. He gave me an opportunity. Actually, I met him, uh, two story, the Kistamos Alone de Jalisco, outside of a Manat concert, man, at the Paw Paw Theater in Fresno, California. And I walked up to him. I said, hey, man, you know what? I, I need some, uh, in español, por supuesto. Le dije que necesitaba unos créditos universitarios. Y me dijo que fuera a hablar con él. Me da una chance. Eh, that thing led to me meeting uh, Rafael Pulido el Pistolero and, and the rest is history and I ended up in Chicago but he didn't say it to you like that he's like oye primo se pone las pilas y me habla por favor punto y aparte se acabó usted va a ir a la estación y hablamos y y así y ya y punto y aparte se acabó that's what he likes to say that's what he says that's his signature oye primo Pon esta canción ahorita y ya. Yeah, Estoy yeah. aparte. That's it, like, man. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, and then, I, think, I think he felt like a, like a special connection with me because obviously he's from Jiquilpa, Michoacán. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my origins are from Michoacán as well. And uh, so I think he felt that little like, had a soft spot for me, in other words. Let's backtrack right. a little bit. Venga, este, venga, venga. Right there, communications. Well, get, look at that trayo because yeah, like, yeah. You know, I, know, I know you were saying more about yeah. music. Here we go. Uh, but, but what was it that you're Two like, things. Sabes que esto, this is what Two I want to do. So I knew that I was not going to be able to make it as a pro baseball player, but I, <laughs> yeah. Man, there were some guys that were really good. I mean, I was decent, I think. I made it to a couple All-Star games in the Trans Valley League. Pero este, there were some guys, unos, unos uh, Mexico-Americanos, Chicanos como yo, that were, that were really good, man. Um, pero bueno, I, I, I it came to a self-realization that that was not going to happen for me. That was one. Number two, there was a guy by the name of Andy Loscano. The guy looked like George Lopez, dude. <laughs> I swear to God. He, was, he looked like George Lopez, and he was the sports anchor for the local affiliate for ABC Sacramento. ABC Sacramento. Wow. Andy Loscano, live at seven, you know, con, con deportes. I was like, if this guy is this brown and he could do like sports, <laughs> so can I. <laughs> so I, you know, and I, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, years later I, I, I traced him. I looked for him and, oh, I, and I wanted to tell him, man, because of you, I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. He's a sports anchor now in uh, some uh, TV station in Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah, ya está. And he's a lot thinner too. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot thinner too, but... Uh, I reached out to him, and the funny thing is that there was a uh, a female reporter from Houston, Texas, that worked for a uh, affiliate here in Chicago area that I met randomly at a tequila bar, and, that knows him like very well, and yeah, and she was me. yeah she she was, to, nah, she, was able, <laughs> she was able to connect me with him, and I and oh, I reached out to him. I said, man, because of you, I am who I am today. Yeah, that's nice. awesome. Come on, man. That is pretty True bad, story. Get out of here, fucking little kid! <laughs> no, I, I thought I thought that might happen. You know, I was I was a little nervous. You know, we were talking earlier uh, today with uh, los amigos aquí. You know about what things that get me a little nervous sometimes, yeah. and it's more on the sports side versus the music side, yeah. man. Well, yeah. the music artist, I could be like ask him whatever, but when it comes to athletes, I get like really stupefied. I would uh, say. I yeah. think it's the fact that. The guys are like six, eight, three hundred pounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, that sounds like LeBron James right yeah. there, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big ass dude. Kemas, talk to me. I had a oh, question as far as like when you when you saw that and you felt inspired for journalism, mm -hmm. you already kind of started practicing with the voice and kind of knew that you had to have this kind of like speech kind of stuff. You know, kind of like it's funny because uh, we think that it's all like voice based that you have to have this beautiful voice. Like, like yeah. Like for example, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, yeah. Jesse was yeah. blessed. Yeah. Jesse was blessed with a very deep vocal like unos acá four by four vocal cords and stuff. <laughs> you know, este, and I have more of that like in between middle voice hacia bajito but um, I, I try to be as fluent as I can. Yeah. Que me entienda lo que, le, lo que estoy diciendo and, and, and it's just a myth, man. Back yeah. then yeah. it was uh, el que tenía la voz solta. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Like the Guy from the yeah. radio, yeah. <laughs> Queremos que se te caiga en los chones a los talones, no? But, 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 yeah, but nothing like that. It's all about how you. Uh, it, many years later, it came to I came to a conclusion. It's how you engage and connect with people. Right. Yeah. Doesn't matter how beautiful your voice is, yeah. is if you can make a connection with individuals, man. Gotcha. Right. But I, yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, I was I I would. I would, you know, stand in front of a mirror and I'd be like, trying to sound like very professional. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, this is Omar Ramos, live at seven, <laughs> with, you know, action news sports, you know. Pero no se trataba de eso. It yeah. was just what I was making myself believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to imagine, because I, I know that I, I see how 
you know, people in the news, they how they speak, and it's a rhythm. It's a, like you know, everything. Well, it's a, it's it's a, a rhythm. Big, you know why it's a rhythm? Yeah, because it's all timed. It's all timed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you got twenty seconds to say what you're gonna say. <laughs> it's like that. You seen that? TikTok, you. Did you seen that TikTok challenge? <laughs> TikTok challenge where they had to read yeah. a prompt or something like that. Yes. People started doing it. I have it. a couple of friends of mine, one of some guys, that in Austin, that they've done a couple of TikTok videos, and it's hilarious, man, because it's so true. Que tienen que decir como mil palabras, como like thirty seconds, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> A la siete. <laughs> no, that's why I, I was never up for that job. I was like, oh, uh, blah, 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 yeah, blah. yeah. Jim, but the like, thing is that <laughs> Jesse, you had your own style though. Right, though. You right, had yeah, your yeah. way of communicating, <laughs> and you have that deep, uh, bassy voice, right? So they were asking you to do things that were outside of maybe your comfort zone, right? <laughs> right, right you have right. your way of being clear with that. Doom, 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 boys, right? It was funny, but it was funny. And then in, in, uh, the traffic reports, and like, yeah. you got 30 seconds for two sponsors. Yeah. Dude. And you got to take four uh, roads. And I'm like, it'd be like, oh, it'd be oh, like, I remember that. <laughs> he'd be like, this is Jesse Legrand. <laughs> Dote. Yeah. 30, 30 seconds are up, man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Back to you. <laughs> it's packed as fuck. <laughs> Back to you. Uh, I just said, it's a parking ni, lot. Ni, wait, did you see the el patrocinador, wey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patrocinador. <laughs> Wow, so uh, so now uh, you know you you did your uh, schooling and, uh-huh. then, and and then when did you what year did you then make the jump from California to Chicago? Uh, this was back in two thousand four, I think it was. Oh, like, I don't think, no, no, see, this guy was way off. Oh, that's why I brought it up. Nineties and shit. No, it was uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like two thousand two thousand four, muscle menos, because they came here before I did. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Pisto- Primo came first right. in 2002. Then Pistolero came in 2003. I came in 2004. Mm-hmm. I came in. I flew in with him. Um, they, they, they flew us in to kind of s- kind of propose some stuff, trying to lure us in. I was like, this is not for me. I was, I was telling these guys, um, by the way, thank you for the beverages tonight. Yes. <laughs> uh, drink up, drink up, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were, they were uh, where was we're I at? We're going to have another Scotty situation. They flew you in? Yeah, they flew me in. But I had, I had like this, like the first hot girlfriend that I ever had in my life, dude. Like <laughs> la primera muchacha bonita that ever like actually talked to me, man. Because the, girls didn't talk to me when I was growing up, bro. Because I was a campesino smelly kid, right? I uh, because, yeah, bro. The, because they were the would, Yeah, smelly, they would dude. ask me, hey, what are you wearing? I'd be like, All Spice is my dad's. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right? I didn't have the money for the obsession or the uh, eternity. No, que era la cosa. Curve, I no. So I would smell, dude. I would smell like rancho, yeah. which is actually a hot thing now. But oh, back, yeah, yeah, but yeah. back then, if you smell like, if you smell like rancho now, yeah. it was like, it's oh my hot, God, I want to take you. Like, holy Holy shit, who's just stepped on some cow shit because you yeah, smell great. Exactly. But yeah. back then, it was like, dude, it has, it has mugre, vato. Literalmente, they treated you that way. So I had a girlfriend back then, man, Lorena Pizarro, remember her. And um, Shout out, Lorena. She actually, yeah. she ended up marrying one of the guys from Bosses del Rancho, to be honest. Oh, yeah, oh, like oh. that, bro. Like so now, that. Now, every time you see Every time I hear <laughs> Every time I hear of also the Rancho song, I'm like, off. (laughs) 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 Off. And it was like the short one, the gordito Uh, one. uh, (laughs) I was like, damn, like that, man. No, eh, saludos a Lorena. Gordito power. (laughs) I think his name was Edgar. Yeah, 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 ese vato. He was a good dude. Both of them, actually, both brothers are like really cool people, man. But yeah, she, she had a soft spot for those guys for some reason. But este, yeah, so I I didn't I didn't este, I, we totally got off track here, but <laughs> it's not good. Este, yeah, so I didn't come right away with them because okay. I was so into her and I was like I want to make my mom proud because I had a you know pretty girlfriend and all that stuff. But este, things didn't turn out, and then um, yeah, uh, Rafael Pistolero he um, he proposed his idea to come out here and. Coming from a very humble background, uh, the money made sense, and I flew yeah. over here, and then the rest is history, man. Shit. Because that's, I mean, that's a big change. That's wow. a big well, you know, it stuff. is, it is, yeah. but you know what? Our parents did that. Yeah. yeah. Nuestra, nuestros papás, nuestros abuelos, y ancestros, I mean, maybe not our ancestors, but like our abuelos, like mi papá José, que en paz descanse. By the way, we called our, uh, I never called my uh, granddad uh, abuelo. You had to call him papá because you get your ass kicked if you called him abuelo. abuelo. So yeah. papá José, yeah, they were very, they were very sensitive when it came to that. Este, so my papá José came over here as a bracero for, but he didn't like the American life, so he went back. Um, so yeah, I mean, my dad, dude, he yeah. he migrated, left his homeland to the United States. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I mean, if we ever put that in perspective, leaving yep. your 
home country Wait, to like, another country where you don't even know the language. A language barrier. Exactly, yeah, dude. Yeah. So, right. And, and, so, and, and, so, at the age of 16. I yeah, mean, my dad was yeah. actually, uh, the first time he crossed, I think it was, uh, he said he was around in the 16, 17. Yeah, man. And then he got beat up by some like other paisas, dude, in Tijuana. And then he went back, and then he came back with a tío of his, and then he got beat up again by, like, some native – well, I'm not going to get into that one. Pero este, he got beat up again, and, uh, and then he came back. And then he came back again at 37, dude. Mm. Uh, no, I'm lying. 36. And uh, somehow he's able to land in uh, California, and uh, he was already dating my mom, who was 20 at the time. And, uh, yeah, just, the, things just kind of fell into place, and they got married. He said, se van de Qualcomán para acá, and, and – yeah. How is that uh, food barrier <laughs> from California to Chicago? And not, not just food barrier, <laughs> pero también este weather barrier. <laughs> weather uh, barrier, uh, man. Not, not yeah. having more, that's a, a great of, question. Like, yeah. I mean, in reality, you only had, you only knew Primo Rafa and yeah. Pistoletto. It was tough, man. I thought I would I, I never believed in homesickness because I never experienced it. Right. But, oh, dude, like the first week, I was like, literally, I lived in, uh, don't, don't want to sound like I'm showing off or Peresomida or anything, but I lived uh, in, um, what do you call it? Streeterville. Uh, yeah, right there, right by the lake, dude. Erie and Lakeshore Drive, dude. Ah, damn. And, bro, it was a beautiful, it was like this uh, high rise. Teníamos un depa en el piso 52. Me tocaba hacer pipí con los angelitos, dude. Like, literally, bro. So like, the up there, bro. But I do, like, literally, being already, like, I think I was 20, 20 something. 25, 26. Oh, Bro, wow. lloraba, wey. Like, lloraba because I was like, fuck, I, I miss. I miss my trees, my almond trees. Yeah. I miss going to, like, like uh, Aldo's nightclub, bro. And, you know, I, like, just the little things that were so, like, right there. Seeing my mom, her chilaquiles and all that. It was like, oh, damn, yeah. dude. Like, I feel like somebody was, uh, uh, me estaba asfixiando, right? Yeah. Uh, but it was just one of those things that I needed. I knew that I needed a... Uh, Overcome, Primo Rafa was like my psychological therapist. Tell me, yeah, I know it hurts, man, but oh, you you know, get through it, man. You're in a very good uh, opportunity. You're surrounded by people that care about you. So, yeah. Nice. nice. Oh yeah, and going back to your question. <laughs> uh, so the, one of the funniest things. Am I taking too long? So, no, no, no. no, 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 no. Light yeah, so one of the, one of the first things. Uh, Para la gente que no sabe, especialmente la gente aquí en Chicago, uh, para la gente que vive en el centro de California, el Valle de San Joaquín, the beautiful thing about the valley is that you have everything close to you. You want to go to L.A., uh, it's like a three-hour drive on 99. You want to go to the Bay Area, it's like an hour away from, from the valley. You want to go to the snow, you go up to Sonora, to uh, Jamestown, the Yosemite National Park, that's about... Maybe 40 minutes. So estás, you're like in the middle of everything, yeah. right? Yeah. And cuando subes cuesta arriba la sierra, obviously it gets cooler. Are yeah. huh? there Sonoma? Is that where the sequoia trees are? At? That, okay, so that's one of the that's one of the national parks. So you have Yosemite National yeah. Park. Mm -hmm. South of that is Sequoia. Oh. Sequoia. The beautiful thing about Sequoia is where the sequoia trees are at. Yeah. Those large, large, the biggest yeah. trees on the face of the earth yeah. are there. So I grew up going there as a kid. So that was like normal to me, man. Yeah. Right? So then when people go and they, they see these shoes, like, oh, my God, where am I at? So it's, it's, it's a cool thing. So if you guys ever want to trip out and see like super large trees, <laughs> go to Sequoia National Park. You're going to go through Visalia, California, and go straight to that park and ask where General Sherman Tree is at. Para que sepan lo que es amar a Dios en tierra ajena, for sure. Damn. Oh, yeah. And going back to your question again, <laughs> one of the craziest things that happened to me. So when when uh, Pisolero and I, we lived in downtown, um, we went to like uh, the local Mickey D's, right? And we're ordering food and the lady says, would you like pop with that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So for Californians, yeah. so Californians, pop is candy. Yeah. Right? Oh, pop. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, un pop yeah. it's un candy. It's pop. un como like that little poppy the, the candy. Pop rocks. Yeah, yeah, so pop rocks. Yeah. So she's like, would you like pop with that? And Visaleta and I were like, uh, no, thanks. We, we don't want candy with our food. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, why would, I, why would you think that I was trying to insinuate candy with your food? And I'm like, well, you, you said pop. And she's like, no, no, like soda. Like, you tonto, like, you know. So <laughs> we're like, oh, soft drink. So in California, we called soda soft drinks. No. Wow. Yeah, yeah, crazy, right? Yeah. That is fucking No, it's yeah. funny because in Texas, they, they, call, oh, they call Coke. I'm like, can I have a Coke? And they're like, what flavor? I'm like, damn. 
There is a dark, yeah. regular, light, and extra light. Uh, though. So they call every pop yeah. Coke uh-huh. in Texas. So oh, it's like, shit. so yeah, and, and it's funny because they're like, when I'm like, oh, can I have a pop? And I'm like, it's a true story. And they're man. like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. It's so, yeah. Cosa, que casos de la vida real. <laughs> 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 So the lingo was uh, the lingo was a little bit off for you. Uh, yeah, the the sh- yeah. the Midwest uh, lingo. It took community. a while. It, it took, took a, while a while to kind of adapt to it because we say like for example, being from Cali, uh, we say a. Hey. I know, huh? We say I know, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I know, huh? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. You know, we say we sound Canadian, bro. Like li- literally. So can't, people would be like, "You're not from here." I'm like, "Well, yeah, I live here. Yeah, but you're not from here." I'm yeah. like, so it took me a while to acclimate. So yeah. it's the. So now I say. Um, this is Mines. My yeah. 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 Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Yo. Use I like guys. That. I like that. Use guys. I, I got I'm called briefing. I'm briefing really hard. <laughs> I'm briefing. I can't breathe. No. Can't breathe. So, so um, yeah, you know, what, you one of the projects that we had is uh-huh. that I know you, you started con Lo Regional Mexicano. Yeah. Que era con el Pistolero. El Pistolero yeah. Show was uh, algo bien exitoso para la gente que no es de Chicago. Un morning show de oh, yeah. décadas. I mean, oh, dude, the yeah. guy did a lot of good stuff here in the, uh, he locally. Did, he did. And he did. And he, he did get to go um, cross country. O, o sea, este... Radio. I'm talking about that he was in different cities at the same time. Yeah, he, he did. But I think I think with him, um, it was more. He was very grassroots. He was very right. more like local. Right. That's right. what he wanted. That's what he envisioned. I mean, the guy was just born with with a talent, a numerous family, lots of brothers and sisters. Uh, had a very hard upbringing. Uh, de las cosas. We we lived a lot of experience, very difficult experiences back in California. But he was just he he was just born with. Um, this talent, just to engage right. with people, man. Right, right. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it he could just say that. very little, but he could engage with people, man. Right, mm-hmm. right. And he would always tell me, Omar, you know, radio is not that complicated. We make it complicated. You know, he would say that. <laughs> we make it. We make ourselves think that it's complicated. He, el se soltaba, just like I'm kind of conversing here with you right. guys, yeah. and, and that's the way he was. Yeah. And the, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about him is that his show, he never gave anything. Nunca regalaba nada, like, prizes on air, because he didn't want to be that radio DJ that, like, I want you to listen to me because I'm going to give you a $1,000. Right. Uh, okay. And he, he would come bust out with some crazy ratings, man, because he was a whole different, there was a whole different value to him, right? So I was very blessed to work with him for a couple of years. Um, you know, there was a time and moment where I felt that I needed to kind of expand and kind of break off and do my own thing because I, I felt like I was still under his umbrella for, like, the longest time. And... Uh, I had some other, como cualquier persona, ¿no? Que quiere hacer otra cosa con su vida. Yeah. Um, I asked him for his blessing. Uh, at first, he, we kind of bumped heads about it, but he was like, all right, do your thing, man. And then we started doing uh, some pop rock stuff back in the day. Right. Este, but he, he was a, a great mentor, just a very, very talented individual, man, that spoke from his heart. And I, I will always be grateful for him, with him. That's where, where I wanted to get to con, con eso que... I mean, estabas haciendo uh, radio uh, regional, yeah. and then you want to do Spanish pop rock. Uh-huh. You know? Like, how did you get into that? O, o sea, si no, coming from a background, it sounded like you, you grew up with, you know, regional yeah. Mexican. So, Well, you know what? I think I learned that trait uh-huh. uh, in, in the fields, bro. Like, okay. una cosa es piscar durazno y otra cosa es piscar chavacano. You had to uh, acclimate to the to the different uh, temperatures, man. Right. Like, también uh, cosechando lo que es la nuez, which is during the cold season, y el chavacano, which is, uh, people ask me all the time, which is like the worst, like, uh, farm working uh, job you've ever done? Peaches, bro. Every time you guys bite into a peach, like, you have no idea what goes behind that, man. It's 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 a mofo, 115 degrees in California, uh-huh. and in Moscow's and like swampy weather, and these people are out there Busting Thank their tail off. Nuestra gente, nuestra raza, because nobody else does that job. So I think just acclimating to everything kind of built this persona, this, this, this molded me into being able to mold and acclimate to different things because that's the only thing that I had in life. Right. Yo me tenía que preparar. A las cinco de la mañana me tenía que despertar to be by a tractor by six o'clock in the morning before the sun came up because you needed to beat out the sun before it got hot, man. Before it so, beat you. Yeah, before it beat you. It yeah. would beat you bad and we needed to be done by work by one o'clock because oh. by one, ya no soportabas. Man. Yeah. Ya no soportabas. So oh. I think that helped me. I, I've always said that and people are like, well, how, how can you cut? What, what, una cosa it's, tiene it's, que ver con la otra cosa. You just right. acclimate to whatever it is. In the music industry, if you want to survive, you just can't be one thing. One thing. You got to right. like, dude, <laughs> yo me tenía que era como un... Uh, 
estuche morirías, me tendría que aclamar como diferentes cosas. Oh, man, I, I, and, and I saw it firsthand, and I, I can back you up a thousand percent because, uh, you know, we would be doing, we we're finishing up a, a concert, and then two hours later, you're like, oh, man, you got a Sox game to go to. You got to call this game. Yeah. And then after the Sox game, hey, we got to go to this nightclub. Yeah. And, and we would just sleep two, three hours. And in our like, cars. In our cars. Yeah, dormíamos en el carro. He, or or in, in the garage, and then, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, I, I mean, that's when we were, you know, obviously younger. Y aguantábamos <laughs> las desveladas. It was funny because uh, I remember a couple of times we were together, and like, hey, bro, just knock at the door. When you're ready to go, yeah. I, I'm, I'm harder to wake up. And yeah, I, I as just, long as you can just sleep a little bit, you know, te quitabas el cansancio. Y mucha gente nos decía, like, hey, man, you guys do a lot of drugs, right, bro? Yeah, really? I'm, I'm, yes, yeah. Damn. Like, you do a lot of coke, right, bro? What kind because of reputation you, you got, Jesse? No, no, Damn it. They would see me at a nightclub till four in the morning, four or five in the morning. Uh -huh. Yeah, la siete. Boys, uh, well, when I was on the radio, Sunday mornings was my, my shift. Sunday at six to ten in the that morning. That is true. So I would finish at four in the morning at a nightclub. I would go eat some carnitas Bro, and then yeah. go straight to the radio station I and turn that. on the mic. You know what? And, and now that you just say that, I want to take this moment to to uh, send some shout outs to some people that I I live those experiences, starting with you, Jesse, yeah. El Parrandero, yeah. uh, Eric Garcia, yeah. El Gaito Goyo, que ya no está con nosotros. Yeah. We miss him a lot. Yeah. El Recorcholis, oh, uh, Rubén Lomelí. Uh, el Abelito Vences. Yeah. El, uh, el Cocho. El Abel. <laughs> yeah. Pistolero, who, who's my brother from another mother. Uh, Primo Rafa. And, um, eh, ¿quién más? Hay otros nombres ahí. Um, esta, Valerie, Valeria. Valeria. Valeria yeah. también. Este, there's some other names, man, that I'm missing out right now. Oh, uh, Cristian Ramos. También, oh, Cristian, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. A little story, a real quick story with him. He was... Well, I, I didn't want I don't want to say that it was weird because like every time I, I would have to do something with Cristian Ramos, yeah, it was at least a two hour drive to a rancho. Right? Yeah. And it would do a, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and then the whole two hour ride, you have pictures of caballos. Saludos a la raza que va la herradura. He said, mira, mira esta chulada de caballo. Mira esta chulada. Well, he was the one that got me to horses, dude. Yeah, but that oh, was like yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. the horses were was, was porn for him. And yeah. that's all he would talk about. That's all he cared about. That, all, that and soccer, dude. That and soccer. Remember that? That was the only thing that he cared about. Soccer and horses, bro. Never talked about women. I was like, I don't know about you, dude. Pero este, oh yeah, and I, este, Chiquilin. Chiquilin. Oh, yeah. Armando. Yeah, yeah. He's doing some uh, awesome stuff in Dallas right now in the he's morning. Still, he's in Dallas now? Yeah, oh, he's, uh, he's got a morning show going on, man. Funny, he's, he, uh, we, we bump heads all the time. Yeah. Lamentamos la madre cada rato, but he's my brother, man. He, uh, I, I did a, an event with uh, the Compasor Cascabel uh, this past Sunday, and uh, I was out in some uh, place in uh, Joliet. Mm -hmm. And I walk in, they're like, Chiquilín. I'm like, no, ese güey está bien feo. And no, así está feo, güey. Chiquilín, sorry, bro. Así está feo, güey. And then uh, he, he looked at me, he's like, ah, tú eres el grandote. I'm like, ahora sí, ya ahora le tiraste. Ahora sí, ya le tiraste. Te iba a dar mi tarjeta de desk para una quinceñera, pero ya no. Chiquilín actually came out in one of uh, our music videos back in the day. Banda oh, Nueva, did he? Yeah, Banda Nueva Seca. And... Um, He was carrying the tuba. He was a tuba player. Oh, that's was, it, was, he wear, was he wearing the sweatpants that he never took off? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even... He was I, always wearing I, I, sweatpants, bro. I bumped into him a couple years ago at the promoter's yeah. uh, thing in Vegas, and he yeah. was wearing sweatpants. At the yeah, show. yeah. <laughs> We hung out, man. We were together. We almost, uh, he invited me to, to the Bears game in um, uh, London. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Raiders yeah, yeah, uh, Bears yeah. game, bro. We hung out, dude. That guy's a trip, dude. Is is the yeah? We were out in London checking out the <laughs> Raiders game versus the Bears. <laughs> Man, if you guys have a chance to go to London, do it. They took off. We were there for a couple of days. We were there for the um, for the game. Y después they took out to Bud uh, Budapest. I wonder why. Oh, yeah. Este, pero yo I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. So what I did. I bought a ticket to Italy, bro. Oh. Nice. Me fui yo solo a, a Roma, Italia. Solo, güey. Con mi, mi, mi mochila y yo. And I was there for a week, bro. Damn. And I suffered, bro. Now I know what it's like when la, la raza viene de México para acá y que no hablan inglés. <laughs> I was like in, in Italy and I thought, well, si los like italianos, Spanish. they're going to, you know, Spanish, you kind of see them sometimes and you understand like yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Bro, those guys were like, nah, they, they, just, they fast, chewed me man. up, bro. They had, their, they had their lingo. Tortilla. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Tortilla. No, I was like, I was like, I was like, just según yo, bro. Like, I stayed in this little hotel, like right there in this downtown Roma, 
uh, Rome, and it's right by the El Treni, which is the, like the downtown train station. Yeah. Y yo dije, pues aquí la tengo, bro. I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. And then I was in like this little hotel room that had like those doors with like when you see those Italian movies, the like stories, the, 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 little, the little accordion the going on oh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ding, 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 uh, you know? Yeah. But bro, I, I went to go talk to people. I said, I'm like, oh yeah, I like, you um, well, um, how can you know, like, comida, some food? Eh, ragazzi, no, it's a cesari, cesari. And I'm like, no, like, I want, I'm like, uh, quiero, you know, comer, um, food, you know. Like, <laughs> and they're like, no, ragazzi, no entendete, no entendete, no sé qué. And I'm like, oh, God, dude, what the hell do I... And they're like, oh, yes, yeah. oh, yeah, le monje, le monje, which is, yo, quieres comer, idiota, oh, yeah. okay, so I <laughs> le, le monje, yes, yes. Sí, <laughs> quiero comer. The messed up thing is, you had, Italians, you know, uh-huh. No, I said, the messed up thing is, you know, two languages, yeah. and you still couldn't commit. God, <laughs> dude, it, 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 I think, I think they're messing with me, bro, to be honest with you, pero este, pero, bro, la, los italianos, bro, they, they, this is their thing, bro, they smoke, they take shots yeah. of espresso shots yeah. during the day, and they, they eat bread. Yeah. They eat bread, bro. That's yeah. their thing. And I, bro, I, Europeans, I started doing that, bro, and I got a little cachetón, man. So. <laughs> Europeans love to smoke, man. That's their thing. Oh, yeah. That's their thing, bro. Everywhere. That's their thing. That's their thing. I used to I used to smoke back in the day. I'm going to confess it. And <laughs> okay. Pistoletto got me into this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Pistoletto got into us a lot of a lot, vices. A, a lot, lot of, of stuff. Vices. A lot of stuff. A lot of, a lot of stuff. Lot of este, but I never did drugs. Just que quede claro. Este, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, was, I was a heavy-duty smoker for like the longest time. I used to do the Benson Hedges Ultralight 100s, God like the, the long ones. Damn. Yeah, bro, and I and I was addicted to those, and then un día me dio un dolor de cabeza, like hardcore, dude, like hardcore. I feel like somebody was drilling a hole in my head, <laughs> y me, me, me asusté, and I, and I stopped, like cold turkey. Oh, you did? True story, yeah. After how many years of smoking? Uh, about three. Okay. I think my lungs are jacked up, bro, pero este, <laughs> pero bueno, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, <laughs> pero the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to uh, uh, lie to my mom. Yeah. Mijo, you smell a little funky today. I was like, no, nah, you know, no me bañé. Oh, it's it, it's funny because my mom did the the same thing. Like, well, I did it out of spite because I'm I could. Yeah, you know, the, they weren't carding me because I was always big, and I'm like, oh, I could buy cigarettes. Yeah, at like thirteen, fourteen. Mm-hmm. Y luego este a lady a lady from school. She didn't smell me, but I had them. Yeah, and she's like, este este niño no debe de tener una voz así de de gruesa. Yeah, debe de estar fumando. They were well, from yeah, well, you, yeah, you were born with uh, with some crazy pipes, man, yeah. and, and that, that's that's awesome. Um, you know, it's it's crazy how how somebody can become so dependent and and addicted to smoking, bro. Yeah, I hated it. As my dad used to smoke a lot, and I hated it because he used to do the the red ones, the Marlboros, Marlboro like Reds. like hard. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I tried that one time, and I dropped over fucking Mariano. Bro. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I became yeah addicted to smoking uh, because of the influence, right? The peer pressure, and then it became an uh, an addiction to me. And I was I was doing that during college. Este, pero un día sí me asusté porque me dolió la cabeza. I felt like my head was like busting open, and I stopped and um, I stopped cold turkey. And then you know I've done it casually here and there, but all it just not feeling in control. I hate that feeling, and I just stopped doing it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we used to do it for fun, just like. I think we're like 18 and we're like, all right, what are we going to do? Let's go drive and smoke. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, son experiences, pues, you know, that, that we, when we're younger, we, we think we, we know we're doing and, and hay gente que se queda ahí, hay gente que no. It's funny because I, I, my first cigarette, I remember it. I like, I lit it up. And I don't know if you you what kind of cigarette you talking about? No, no, though, I had got some uh, <laughs> I got some Newports. The okay, Menthol, oh, yeah. Right? yeah, bro, the was, cheapest of the cheapest, yeah. bro. Man. So it was funny because back then they used to sell like a same pack of wow. but it, it, there was rolled gum and you would blow on it. It was like powdered sugar. It was oh, like yeah. that wanna be smoke, right? Really? And then you would unrap it. And you oh, just I remember chew those. It, right? Yeah, I remember those. So yeah, yeah. when I lit my first cigarette, I'm freaking blowing out. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, what like, the fuck's what going the on? What's going on here? Yeah. This, this is how people smoke? Man. Okay. You had you had fun. <laughs> that was all mariado. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what else you guys got for me, so, man? Man, now that you touched, um, you know, traveling and everything, uh-huh. I actually want to hit a little bit on your sports now. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you're the voice of uh, all the teams, but I also know that you enjoy going to games. Yes, so I do. If you have to pick what is the best game that you've been to, um, what would you consider that being? God, that's a hard one because le tengo un cariño y respeto a, a todos los eh, 
equipos. Um, I enjoy all of them because I enjoy the science and the DNA of 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 every sport, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've I've seen I've been at games where I've seen some cool stuff, like when I I, I was able to see Cornerico get hit in the face one time yeah. by a pitch with the White Sox, and then mm. he comes back and he hits like two home runs yeah. in the same game. I've been at the game when uh, Derek Rose busted his knee. That just oh, changed. Yeah, I was there. Uh, I was there, man, and and it was like, wow! I just felt like that was it, and that was it with him. That was it. He played he played him too long that yeah. the game, right? Uh, well, what what else are you gonna do? It was a playoff game, man. It yeah, was like, they were up. They were up by like fucking double digits. But, but you right? just never know, man. I've I've been at games where you're 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 asking yourself, why is the superstar still playing? Yeah, you know what I mean. You just you never know, man. And you know, um. I mean, I don't want to get into the down and dirty and gritty of it, <laughs> yeah. but Oeste, it just, it just, it was part of his fate, bro. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, oh, that's cool. Though. You I, were there. I, I've, I've been at games where I learned something new. Like I've been to the the hockey games, right? And I, there was certain stuff that I didn't know about hockey. So, le tengo respeto a todo porque todo tiene su razón por ser. Right. You know, there's a science behind it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, yeah, we were talking about this earlier before we we started the the recording. About you know when it comes to ba baseball, by the way, is my favorite sport because right. there's there's so much psychological input into it. Right. Every pitch, bro, fastball, curveball, knuckleball, uh, changeup. You know, every batter is different, right? So there's so much investment and 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 pre preparation to ev that's that's why there's a pitcher every day, and that's why every pitcher has to rest at least five or four days before mm -hmm. he pitches again because he's got the dead arm going on right. And there's some pitchers that can throw up a changeup better than others. There's a, right. there's some guys that can't throw a curveball because they don't have control over it. So it's just that that grind that just drives me nuts and it, and attracts me to baseball. But everything has its 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 uh, science. The only thing I I don't like is tennis. Okay. Which is which is uh, ironic, and I mentioned that because my daughter wants to be a, a tennis, tennis player. player. <laughs> wow. I had no idea. Damn, tennis was so expensive. You <laughs> just <laughs> chorcitos. I'm like, what? Do you, what do you got, girls? With the chorcitos going on, bro? Like, you know, and the racket is like fucking. Sorry. Beep. Uh, I thought you were good. Five hundred, like five hundred dollars. Get the fuck out of here, really? <laughs> He's like, Bob, like I need a racket. I'm like, okay, mija, let's go to like the flea market right there in uh, Rosemont. <laughs> there's a, there's this lady I know. She sells them. She's like, no, 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 dad. I need a certain brand a certain style Wilson. Need, she's tall uh, she's tall yes, that, yes, she's, like, she's like a little bit taller than I am now because she got my dad's jeans my mom is short my dad is tall I kind of stayed in between <laughs> um, pero ella le dio I, she got the Ramos genetics man and ya, ya está un poquito más alta que yo she's 15 dude oh, but she's she's just like naturally strong yeah right? she's, so she's working on her backhand right now right and it, it was, I mean she hits it harder than I do man and But I had no idea tennis was so expensive and golf. She wants to do golf as well. Wow. So I like I almost I I just want to be the her best friend and supportive and whatever I can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you uh are you a soccer enthusiast or no? I am. I am. Okay. Um you know what? It's funny you ask that because back in the day, back in the 90s uh, in California it was prohibited to be part of a soccer team because okay. it was like the the wussy sport. I was like who wants to be really? a soccer player? Yeah, back oh, in California. Shit. I don't know about here. No. But back there in the sm smaller schools, yeah. it, uh, it was just baseball and football, bro. Yeah, yeah. And basketball, see, the momento te if you were tall enough, right, you to play. Enough, right. Um, so soccer wasn't a big thing with me. Hasta ya después, like when I was in college, because I had some cousins that were like big Aguilas fans, bro, like big right. Aguilas fans. They were really good at soccer. So their influence on me made me an America fan. I know, Jesse, you know this already. Sorry, Jesse. I know, I know, I know. But that's what keeps it interesting, bro. That's what keeps it interesting. I'm, I'm monitored right now. I'm not listening. What would be the point in being a Chivas fan si no hubiese America fans, bro? Right? right? right. Exactly, right? Yeah. Come on now. I'm America fan, too. Yeah, okay. There you go. So he's got the yellow going on, yeah. man. He's got the yellow going on. So, Yeah, he's, Boom. he tells me, what's up, Jesse? Hell yeah. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. So it's the, anymore, I, right? I love soccer. Um, no I, I've, again, I, I started doing my due diligence as far as studying the, the, the why, what play, I mean, cuál es la función de cada jugador, right? Right. right. I didn't understand it before, but now I do. And uh, uh, so I've been able to work closely with the professional soccer team here in Chicago. And uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. And then when you, when you meet players that are from other parts of the world, like South America, Central America, and then the European players, bro, the Serbians, los de Yugoslavia, yeah. and then you see how their tactic and their fundamentals and, and, and what they believe in, and it kind of blends with our raza, nuestra gente latina, it's just a beautiful thing.
That's true. Going going back to um, going back to radio, man. Uh-huh. I love I love about your sports story about everything, man. But, you know, it's the, you start off, you start, you know, you veer off Pistoletto show, and mm-hmm. and who is an artist that you would you said like, man, you walked in and. You you just like man starstruck starstruck because I'm pretty sure you're you're array of of, uh, of meeting people yeah uh, sports athletes all all the uh, all the big names yeah in music yeah I uh, what what are some and what what's something that knocked uh, your boots off uh golly because I've 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 interviewed interviewed so many of them um where do I start man I was the first. Radio DJ to interview with Cine and Dale here in okay, Chicago. Yeah, I was the first radio DJ to interview uh, Prince Royce. Yes, right. Who would have thought? There. Who would have thought he would become who he became? Right. It was funny because uh, Prince Royce. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. We, we. I remember we brought him. You interviewed him. Yes. And, and yeah, I, he still wore the hat. Remember, he still, he still wore, wore the hat. hat yeah, I like presented, sideways. Yeah. I presented him on stage. Yeah. He uh, is. We were all there together. We were like, we were like, La Calle, what else? Six point seven. La Calle, Tony Mas. Yeah. And Wait, then, it was in his voice, by the way. Yeah. 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 I'm like, yeah, and it was just funny because we didn't know. Like two years later, he didn't even want to talk to us anymore. Yeah, yeah I mean, it happens, man. It's it's part of the business. There's some artists that kind of forget where they come from. Um, he still says hello to me because he remembers, right? Right, but it's not like the hey, what's up, homie? Yeah, me acuerdo de ti, way. No, but he he remembers though. He remembers, and when he sees me, he's like, hey, dude, what's up? It's kind of like boom, boom, boom. How you been? Yeah, Dios, right. But to answer your question, you know, I, and I've always said this, especially I, I do a lot of community work. When I do a lot of, um, they invite me to like career day at schools, elementary, junior highs, and high school. I believe in giving back to the community, which yeah. is very important because I didn't have that as a kid. And I was bullied a lot as a kid. Um, so I, I, I flipped that around and I want to be that person that doesn't treat other people that way. Right. So when, they, when little kids ask me that, I always say, and even though he does have some crazy lyrics going on sometimes in his music, Pitbull. Pitbull is is an extraordinary human being, man, and I will always say that. Um, I remember there was there was this one time um, I presented him at uh, at uh, the nightclub right there off of Twenty Fifth and Kedzie when he was doing appearances like that. Yeah. Shit, yeah, yeah, he was doing that, and him and I had a a, a blue mofo drink. <laughs> and, and that, and that, remember that? Remember that drink that got a lot of us in trouble. Remember that drink, the Blue Mofo? Blue Mofo. <laughs> the Blue that Mofo. Was popular right there. Yeah, man. so yes. him and I were having a Blue Mofo. <laughs> um, and we were talking like this, bro. We almost kissed and shit, bro. It was, like, yeah. it was, it was crazy. I'm not gay, by the way. <laughs> este, pero, este, we, had, we, had a, uh, we had a crazy, and he, he, he opened up and told me about his, uh, the whole Cuban thing, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, so moving forward, este, th- there was this one time at uh, La Garibaldi. He did a special cameo appearance, and he was on stage. Bro, everybody, it was one of those private events going solo con invitacion kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's on stage, and there was like thousands of people, bro, that just showed up to see this guy. And um, he's on stage, oh, no, tiene tremendo, you know, whatever. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, bro, he, he does his, uh, I think he did like five songs, and he took off, bro. And um, I was backstage, obviously working. And he comes off stage, bro, and he's walking out. And I said, hey, Pig, good to see you again, man. But his people were dragging him, bro. Yeah. You know, you know how they do backstage in La Garibaldi. <laughs> like they're walking Obama off or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, bro, he got in a car. The car turns around, bro. And he goes and, and the parks back. Then La Puertecita is in La Garibaldi. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He walks out, bro. And he comes up to me and he says, I'm sorry I didn't say hi to you, man. He goes, Papito. Como estas? And I'm like, good. I'm like, uh, I was like, oh, bro, it's cool. I get it, man. You, you, they want to take you out. He's like, no, 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 no. He goes, bro, I remember you. Like, thank you, man, for for saying hi to me. And I remember that, like, like Holy for always, shit. man. Yeah. So it's it's like that humble side, bro. I believe yeah. in humbleness. Oh yeah. I think there's people that don't believe in that. There's people that believe that if you're a, a dick, and you keep that fantasy alive in people's heads, like, oh my god, you know, it's in intocable. I don't, I don't believe in that, man. And I think that has a lot to do with my. My humble background, where I come from, not privileges but sacrifices. Man, 
dope. Shout out to the guy that just went by in his motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never fails. It never, never fails. fails. Like it never yeah. fails. Man. Shout out to 63rd Street for that one. It's uh, we call this downtown Midway. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, now in contrast, uh-huh. uno, uno que se portó bien, coming. uno que se portó bien mamón, y <laughs> you're just like, you know? and turn on the mic, and you're like, hey, what's up, we're best friends, and then you turn off the mic, you're like, the yeah. fuck out There's a lot of them out there, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm at this point in my life, after all the pandemic has happened, and, and a mini experience that I've, that I've lived in life, um, I'm just about positive vibes right now, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I think I think everybody has their own demons that they deal with. Right. Um. And there's a couple people out there that I know that they could have been different uh, towards me and other people that I was working with that day. And God bless them. And uh, I, I talked about it off camera. Right. Este, damn. But, you know, it's I can't. The, yeah. God damn it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I que, you know, como dicen, a veces vemos en las, en las redes sociales positive vibes, man. Uh, sí, sí, sí. Y ahí estamos. Uh, la positiva, always, bro. Always I was going to ask, um, as far as when you guys from radio, what got you into the sportscasting side? Okay, so uh, true story, man. Um, I started doing the, the, the music stuff with, obviously, Pistolero and, uh, the, como decía Jesse, the Mexican regional side. So our uh, general manager, ¿te tocó ti, Jerry Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, him. yeah, good Got old him. Jerry Ryan, right? Yeah. Jerry Ryan, good person, Great man. times. Great, Great times with Jerry Ryan. Jerry <laughs> Ryan. So Jerry Ryan is good friends with Jerry Reinsdorf. Okay. Uh, all right, okay. Reinsdorf. We all yeah. know the Reinsdorf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the uh, Reinsdorf uh, team, uh, they wanted to do the... So Jerry always had this thing about talking sports all the time. So Jerry, for people who don't know Jerry Ryan, he was our general manager. Uh, the guy was born and raised in Southside Chicago, played basketball at DePaul University. Oh, shit. Era basketball homie de Tommy. Remember Tommy, the guy that did El, el Anunciador de los Juegos de los Bulls? Remember the guy that used to be like, Derrick Rose, two points. Era un viejito que trabajaba ahí. So he went to school with Tommy at DePaul. They were basketball homies. Mm. So uh, Jerry Ryan would always go in the back and talk to me about, it, like, who was who in sports, bro? Like, ¿quién, ¿quién era el dueño de X equipo and how that family sold that team to that family? He knew it all, bro, the DNA. Jerry was also, like, a rodeo guy, dude. Like, he would go out to Joliet. Y todos los charros lo conocían, bro. Oh, he, dude, yeah. He, he was a cowboy. Yeah, he would come in and cowboy. Bro, I saw that guy, like, lasso a big-ass total one time, bro. Oh, and get off his horse and take the fucking <laughs> rope off the horns. Fucking bite the fucking No, no, he, he'd be like, he knew how to do it. Like, he'd put the horse, the horse would be like, no te vas a mover ni a madres, güey. And the horse would kind of stand a certain way, and, and the bull would be like, oh, it's Jerry, kind of thing. And, <laughs> All right, take the, take, the, take the rope off of me. Like, that was Jerry Ryan, dude. Like, like that. Like, Jerry was it's just a very unique individual, man. Okay. So anyway, long story short, Jerry said, hey, man, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, getting us involved with Spanish broadcasting again. And I want you to be, because he was a diehard White Sox fan. Okay. I want you to be the guy. And you're going to be the guy with Ozzy Guillen Jr., Mm. And uh, and it started like that. That's how it started. Two thousand seven. I was there for the the remember the blackout game. Yeah. Two thousand seven mm-hmm. when everybody was doing the thing with the towel. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was there for that game. Ozzy and Junior was not part of that broadcast. Era un señor puertorriqueño that I'm, I can't think of his name right now, and I apologize. Pero este, um, we did that game, and the year after that, in, uh, that gentleman. Um, was not part of the team anymore, and then Ozzy uh, Guillen Junior was part of the broadcast, and that's where it all started. How was the experience with, with Ozzy Guillen Jr.? Ozzy is... Porque él es el, el mayor el hijo, de Ozzy, Yeah, so right? son tres hijos. Sí. Está Ozzy Guillen Jr., then there's One. One. And then there's Osne. Which one was the shortstop also? El mediano. Okay. Yeah, so there's right Ozzy right. Jr. Yeah, yeah, he was drafted by the White Sox also. Yeah, yeah. And then Osne, Osne was also drafted by the White Sox. Uh, but then he didn't pursue that career. He became a baseball manager. Very successful one, by the way, because oh, obviously shit. he comes from a baseball family. Yeah, so yeah. They, they know, man. The Guillen family is actually, I mean, they're amazing people. I saw them at the Aventura concert. Um, they oh, were sitting, okay. obviously, in the very uh, privileged seats. Um, <laughs> and, and, and they saw me do that. Right at, at, at the thousands. <laughs> well, I was there, like, in the media section, okay. which was we were not front front, but we were near the front. Right. So I'm hanging out with some friends. We're talking. Danny was there. Shout out to Danny Spinoza. Este, and we're hanging out, and all of a sudden, I, I, somebody like kind of clotheslines me, dude. Like, right? 
And it's Ozzy Guillen. Oh, shit. Yeah, Ozzy Guillen. He was there with his wife, Evie's. And, 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 and <laughs> a couple of days before, Evie's, la mamá de los, de los pollos, it was her birthday. So I said, Señora, good to see you. She's, she's es un corazón de mujer. Le dije, Señora, you know, felicidades. Dios me la bendiga, you know. And she's like, Oh, Marcito, tú eres el único que me dice así, Evie's, no sé qué, no sé qué. And then uh, sale Ozzy Guillen Jr., uh, Osne, todos, ya, pues ya grandes con sus parejas y todo el rollo. Yeah. And uh, Ozzy. Junior, I don't think there's somebody else in baseball that knows baseball as much as he knows baseball, dude. Mm. That guy knows baseball like he eats, sleeps, and throws up baseball, dude. Like he's he's he he knows like everything before it even happens, dude. It's weird, kind of like Tony Romo when he's doing his broadcast, kind yeah, of like and he predicts he the predicts play. stuff. Like Ozzy knows his stuff, Ozzy Junior. Yeah. Uh, conozco más a Ozzy Jr. El, pa el papá es eh, un tipazo, un señorón. Uh, él está pues, en otro ambiente, claro, de televisión y media, lo que está haciendo ahorita. And mm -hmm. um, he should be in baseball, by the way, if you ask me. He should yeah. be uh, right. managing again, yeah. but for X motivo, uh, he, he, he's not, um, which, which sucks. But I, I, I've always been a big endorser of him as being a manager again. I mean, the guy won a World Series. Well, I mean, would it be politics or is it just politics? I was just going to say, would I assume that you can yeah. talk about that? Um, I, I have really? no idea what's going on there, okay. man. <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to know what the heck is going on. I mean, this is a man that, that, that played professional baseball, and right? Knows it is out. It's, not like, it's not like the guys that they hire nowadays that are all analytical that never played baseball, but según saben. They got right. the numbers. Right? Yeah, yeah they get, they're, they're numbers people, right? Yeah. And I guess there's a lot of teams now that are hiring people that are numbers people. Well, versus like the Oakland days, right? Yeah, yeah. They versus that. people that are maybe a little old school about the way that they approach the game okay. and, and teams don't want to go down that route anymore because, uh, you know, there's people that are more scientific in numbers and they see stuff that maybe the old school people don't want to look at anymore. Right. Right. So they, they, they invest their money somewhere else. But I, I don't think that's the case here. Um, but going back to us again, junior, um, I have a lot of appreciation for him. He showed me a lot stuff that I didn't know. Outside of like collecting baseball cards as a kid, right? Yeah, he gave me insights. Yeah, he he would he would he would just talk magic, dude, on the broadcast, and uh, and I'm very appreciative of him. Did you ever have any bad animosity when you because uh, you currently you're you're with the uh, with the Cubs uh -huh. right now? Yeah. Did you get any bad animosity from there? Like, oh, you were you're. You're a pre White Sox, or you're a White all Sox the time. boy. All the time, <laughs> all the time, all the time. It's all the time, all the time. I, you're either or. You can't be both. <laughs> hey, I've had the opportunity to throw the first pitch at both stadiums. Oh, nice. how, how many? How many people can say that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm not saying that to sound like brag. You know, no, no, no. my own horn. They're accomplishments. You know what? Yes, there's, sir. There's something. Es that, que el, los equipos han mostrado right. cariño para conmigo because they know who I am towards right. them. Yeah, definitely. No, but as far as those accomplishments about things, those are things uh, i guess to you it sounds cocky but to us the way it sounds you're like holy shit yeah. like we, we never yeah. i didn't know that, that that you did that yeah so that was like that's actually pretty, pretty and it's awesome. the most nerve-wracking thing on the planet by the way oh, yeah, yeah yeah throwing the first how was it did uh, you fucking reach the base or okay anything? so my first one i did <laughs> it no, my first one don't. i did it my yeah, first one i did it my i felt like my arm was like 500 pounds dude the first time I did it at Wrigley Field, it, uh, it was uh, it was what Hector Fabregas. Remember him, Hector, yeah. Hector Fabregas. I used to do the broadcast games with him, and it was like, uh, yeah, they want you. To, you know, I remember we talked. Yeah, they want you to do the uh, first pitch. That's how you talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm down, I'm down. And I practiced it like a hundred times. I went to like the practice? local ballpark, and and I was throwing. I was like, I got this, bro. Once they call your name at the baseball stadium, and coming up next, you know, como decían este. Welcome to Wrigley Field. Coming up next, our invited guest, Spanish broadcaster for the Chicago Cubs in Spanish, Omar Ramos. Everybody applaud, right? And you be like, clap, 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 clap. Yeah, vas tú, right? And all of a sudden, you start feeling your arm, bro. Twitching. It went from like 10 pounds to 500 pounds, bro. And you're like. Seguro, you're walking to the mound. And you see yourself in the yeah, freaking jumble truck, and, and then And then I'm walking with Hector, and Hector's like, don't mess it up, dude. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Pressure, don't man. mess it up. Don't mess it up. Just make sure it doesn't bounce. Make sure it doesn't bounce. Get no peek it because everybody's going to boo you. <laughs> so, um, obviously, I, that day, I don't know why I wore like the most uh, tight uh, fucking. No, eran los pantalones cafés que traía. And they were like super tight on me, man. It was, you know, you got to be careful. You got to take care of your jewels and stuff, right? So, este, I wind up. And I pitch, y que pica la mendiga pelota, ah, bro. Like right, like right in front of home plate. Yeah. And I was like, please, nobody boo. And all of a sudden, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that was my change up. you know, it's, it's yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, it's the, that was my crazy uh, breaking pitch, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and being el mexicano que soy, you know, the Mexican is saying, "Tráigame tierra, güey." Sí. Pero bueno, fue ese ratito ya no se acuerda. Obviously, I do for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second you... time, <laughs> I was like, "This is not going to happen again." The White Sox said, "Hey, Omar, uh, thank you for covering us on your sports segment." And uh, we want you to throw the first pitch. And it was during the day. Uh, it was a hot day, by the way. And uh, it was Chris Sale was going to catch the ball for me. Oh, Remember that dude? Chris yeah, Sale, like their number one pitcher, bro. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a monster. Like, he's a boss. the same I felt, brown I felt, pants again. You know when yeah. you can see like from the corner of your eye, like the, the sweat dripping off the your drip. nose, bro? <laughs> and then that drip is like hitting your leg like, like, like 50 pounds, bro. <laughs> I was like, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm just going to. I'm going to toss it high, not fast, but make sure that mo mofo doesn't uh, hit the ground. And sure enough, yeah, I pitched it, and you don't get the claps. Ah. And then uh, Chris L, who's like seven feet taller than I am, he's like, nice pitch, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like older than this dude, yeah. bro. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, he signed it for me. I have it at home. And, uh, oh, I'm, and you know, unfortunately, he's not on the team anymore. Yeah. But it's, yeah. he's, a, he's a media roja. Yeah, he's a Boston Red Sox. He's a monster, though, man. What else you got for me, man? Well, I mean, I'm glad not not just your opening pitches. Like, I think I haven't met anybody that's got clotheslined by Ozzy Guillen either. Like, that's, that's shit, true, man. That's yeah. True. yeah, yeah, yeah. I right? closed one. Of, I, I actually bumped into Ozzy uh, at uh, Tito, Ro uh, Tito Nieves concert. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. He's, he's always, you know, guy, the, the thing guy. about Ozzy Guillen, he loves music. Yeah. yeah. He's into it. salsa, he and it. he's the biggest, check this out, he's the biggest Marco Antonio Solis fan, dude. Oh, oh. man. So yeah, he's at the Bookies he, concert. He was not at the Bookies concert. He goes to the Marco Antonio. Solis concert, ah. which is two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Right. Okay. Es, son dos diferentes canciones, I mean, estilos de música, right? Yeah. Right, right. Because Marco Antonio has his own, ya cuando se separó de los bookies, obviously that's why they got together, right, right 25 yeah, years course. later. Did you guys go to the concert, by I the way? I was just going to ask I, you, too. I went on Sunday. To Bro, Sunday. I, I, I was, uh, long story short, so I had tickets for Saturday. I sold those because I was invited to some other opportunity to make some money, <laughs> right? Because nowadays you have to find other avenues of, of, of <laughs> income, income, of revenue. Yeah. And uh, so I sold those tickets, got my money back plus some. Yeah, of and on <laughs> Sunday, I was like, thank God that they're here for two days. I went on Sunday, dude. The money that I made yesterday. So, I so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was going to, from that money, I was going to make, uh, I was going to buy un boleto, right? Um, and get something good. And I got something good. Um, but then I had some homies that went to the, the show as well, but estaban hasta allá en la Palomera, bro. And they're like, ¿qué estás haciendo allá abajo, güey? Tú solo, vente para acá arriba. And I was like, the hell with it, bro. Me voy para allá arriba con ellos. So I'm chilling. They're there with their ladies, bro. I'm just like todo solitario uh, like that. Third eh? wheeling. Bro, exactly. Third like, wheeling. like that third wheeling, bro. But, bro, and no, Marco Antonio comenzó con sus canciones, bro. Like, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. And I was like, crack, crack, crack. Uh, <laughs> hey, were you that guy that had the, the fucking Carson? Well, you know, the, you, no, that wasn't me. I saw that, dude. I saw that dude on the video. That was compa. That was right. Bro, yeah, so was really actually, my, my first, the, the first chick that ever kissed me, bro, she because she kissed me, I was scared shitless. <laughs> este, it was in Michoacán. Era una discoteca. It was at a cafe discoteca. Y era una canción de Quiereme con los bookies, bro. Uh, Bro, and she, bro, she was like, bro, she was way ahead of the game, Vente man. Pa Vente pa acá, bro. I'm like, oh, sh I'm like shaking, bro. I was like 15 years old, bro. So, so, so she I'm shaking. You. I'm like, I she feel like I got you. raped, dude, and stuff. Man. So she kisses you, and then says, get him, man. She's, she's, yeah, she, she's no, throwing no, her like, tongue down, she, her, she, and then you're, you're done kissing her, and you're like, ooh. I'm like, I'm, yeah. No, I'm like, I was like, forever I'm going to buy the cassettes of those bookies <laughs> after Cassette. this one. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, the, the, the bookies experience was something that I didn't want to miss right. out on. And uh, it was for everybody that went, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. glad it went. Right? Was yeah, it, it, it was worth it, right? It was worth it. I mean, I know they, they had their songs and everything, yeah. and it's like, you know, typical. And they didn't change anything bro, of their music, I, right? I saw abuelitas and mothers crying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yeah, like I, saw, jumped, I jumped on a time machine. You saw bro. every generation. Every generation. That, and, yeah, yeah. Every generation. Yeah. And they were just jamming the hell out. It, it, everybody, everybody was either dancing. Even if you didn't know their songs, you were right. still kind of like maybe hugging or dancing a song, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something about book is music that will always be engraved in this, man. So. It, right, right. It, I saw a lot of people say, I'm not going to a bookies concert because uh, – it's traumatic for me because that's really? when we, that that's when 
people like que no sean moms. amargados no es que es cuando limpiaban las casas los sábados y ponte a limpiar cabrón oh, pues, that is true drastic. that is true that I, is true I personally and I'm not trying to bash the bookies or yeah. anything or that that time but I, I couldn't personally connect and I'm not I'm trying like, to <laughs> F no, with him, but no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I I wouldn't I couldn't connect because I mean I love the music, but oh, my parents didn't grow up to that. They're, okay. they're a little bit older, so you know, talk about Sonora Santanera, we're there. <laughs> well, it's like yo, okay, yeah, okay. The that's fair enough, fair yeah. enough, yeah. That's the same thing with my mom. She grew, you know, she would cling to Carlos y Jose yeah. and uh, lo que, and some, some other stuff. Yeah, lo que mi mamá eh, aprecia mucho de la música de los buques me decía es que era música limpia música de, oh, yeah. que hablaba del amor y el desamor right. yeah. tiene una forma limpia you know Marco Antonio was very picky with uh, he, he wrote it's all the songs yeah, right? yeah, yeah. but he yeah. was always very clean and he's a very spiritual person dude. Yeah. so he never wanted to have like that Hey, stop, like, like, yeah, stop. Like, that's the way we <laughs> exactly <laughs> back, no. back then it was very clean though the whole yeah. genre yeah. y luego pues son, no, como, son michoacanos. Son michoacanos. Son michoacanos. And, and <laughs> los michoacanos are just <laughs> like, like bueno, por naturally lo menos badass people, bro. Exactly. <laughs> por lo menos él era el michoacano, for sure. So no wonder yeah. Primo Rafa. Mario de Rosales, bro. I de thought Primo Rafa had a, a oh, yeah. necklace of Jesus, but it was actually Marco Antonio yeah. Solís. <laughs> ¿Quién? El Primo, Primo Rafa. Rafa. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, Primo and Marco are very good friends, man. Oh, oh shit. Very, yeah, very good friends. Uh, este, I, I remember a couple years ago, Primo had uh, access. Remember, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys remember the... La gira de Marco Antonio. Oh, Chayanne. No, no. Era Marco Antonio, Chayanne. Alejandro Fernández y Joan Sebastián. Yes. Oh, Eran los tres that. grandes, right? Yeah. So I had, I had the opportunity to go backstage with Primo, because Primo era así con, con Marco. Eh, e invitó antes que nacieran los gemelos del Primo. So we're backstage, bro. And everybody had their own like, room, like their own little universe room kind of thing. I, I wanted to see Alejandro. I wanted to see how tall that dude was, man. I, like, I really wanted to see how... I, era la única cosa que quería ver. <laughs> so I go backstage, bro, and and can I can I say what he was drinking? Do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, dude, they're like slamming Hennessy XO, bro. Like, no, that shit. extra age. Like, yeah, because yeah. como el, el coñac les ayuda con la garganta, right? So they're like, they're like echando Hennessy hardcore backstage. And Alejandro's like... Now you, now, now you know why. Se los vienen las canciones el cabrón when he's singing. <laughs> Este, and then I see Marco Antonio. Marco Antonio is very spiritual, clean. Don't bring any BS here. I see Joan Sebastian, bro. And Joan Sebastian, before he got sick, he was like 6'2", bro. Like, he was okay. a tall dude. I oh, see yeah. him, and he's like this little midget person, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Beep. Uh, este, yeah. like, chiquitito, pues. Este... And because so of... Si no, no, lo que no. Lo que pasa es que con los tratamientos... Um, encogió. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and he got he got tiny, bro. And, and it scared me, bro. I was like, I was like, whoa. Like I'd never seen that before in my life. But it was a it was a very unique experience being backstage to see them how they are, you know, yeah. when they're just kind of and they're like chilling. how they are personally. Yeah. And how are they? Though? Yeah. I mean, I never got I never Alejandro, got to that point. <laughs> Alejandro's a very Alejandro's a very outgoing person. He just likes to have a good time and just like we're chilling, bro, yeah. drinking each other this Party day. Yeah. Uh, oh, Marco's very again. He's very spiritual, religious person. Mm -hmm. And Joan, Joan is Joan. Joan is Joan. Joan is Joan. <laughs> Joan That's is a good Joan. way to put it. If you yeah. know, you know. If you if, know, you if know. If you know, right. you know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take you also. We're going to keep going back and forth, but I'm going to take you back to to your sports. Uh -huh. Um, how difficult is it for you to not be like a bias? Because I mean, are you like a? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I can ask you this right here. I mean, are you are you okay with 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 cheering for like another team? As far as um, a base part, like any other, that's not. No, I am. Yeah, I mean, I think people know by now that I'm a. For example, I grew up a big Dallas Cowboy fan uh, okay. back in California. That's, that's my team. Okay. Even though I, I I do work for the uh, the professional uh, NFL team here in Chicago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> este, I, I do stuff with them, but I grew up a big Cowboy fan, bro. A okay. big my my tios, uh, my Pachuco tios. We're big Tony Dorsett and Roger Staubach fans and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, that was like yeah. the thing because when they migrated from Michoacan, they went to Texas and they were in the Dallas area for a while. And then they grew up watching the Cowboys. So then that kind of influenced me being a Cowboy fan. Este, um, but when it comes to like the teams here, yeah, um, I, I think people know now that uh, who how what I stand for. Okay, uh, I'm not biased at all whatsoever. I support all Chicago sports. I'm not that person that's like. Pro, pro north side or pro south side. Yeah, I I love both. That's kind of what I meant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, I love and support both teams to be honest. Okay, and then so do you get like uh, emotionally involved? Like so, like right now you're with, you're doing Chicago Cubs. 
Mm-hmm. Um, when they do something the way they did now, where they let go of all these stars, mm-hmm. I mean, how does that make you feel? Does, does, oh, I feel it... bad for the fans. Okay. Because I know there's an emotional attachment there. Right. But I understand the science behind what they're doing. Behind the business. Yeah. I mean, imagine, like, if you have a business, right? Yeah. And you have all this money invested in something and it's not working for you, what do you do? You got to reinvent, right? Yeah. You got to, like, get rid of what's not working y te vas a lo que, a lo que sigue. Porque tienes tres grandes jugadores que se fueron de Chicago, right? And todo ese dinero is not gel anymore. So what you do, what is, the, what is the, the nature of baseball? After a while, in their last year of contract, which was the situation with these three, play, these three players, right. you get rid of them versus not getting anything in return for them. So, mandos uno para acá, you get prospects in return. That's always been the nature of baseball. Right. You get rid of something, to get some, something to get in something. return yeah. for the future. It's, it's, it's como algo es recíproco. Un es yeah. un ciclo, algo recíproco, right? Right. Um, and you're just hoping that whoever you traded fulano de tal for those two or three prospects and cash or whatever, que te peguen. Well, right? yeah. And maybe out of those three, uno te pega y ya la hiciste. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Like how um Because I, I, I know. You get on I, I used to be that fan. Like, oh, what the hell were you right, doing? Right, right, right. Right? That's like right, back yeah. in the day when, when like Emmett Smith left the Cowboys and he went to uh, the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. Arizona, yeah. Everybody I was like, what the God, I was like throwing stuff bro, all yeah. over the place. And but you're just like, how they how did they not resign? Yeah, him, but right? lo que pasa es que yeah. they, he was just already ya estaba en la en declive. Yep. Ya había para afuera, right? And that's that's what happens. We're human beings, but we're not going to be able to be doing everything forever. Rara la persona que puede estar ahí siempre. Or at a high level, yeah. At a high right. level, yeah. right? Especially when it comes to something so physically demanding. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, I agree. I agree. Talking about sports, I mean, I I think they made a mistake with bias. Mm-hmm. Uh, and letting them and, go, but and how? In what aspect? But because he was playing very well, yeah. But they weren't winning games, so that's why I get rid of all of those three players. When you say uh, playing well, what do you mean? Like no, no. Like I mean, as me as a spectator, uh-huh. he, he was making plays. He was he was hitting good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he was putting his ass on the line. He, I think that uh, he was in his last. Well, no, it's not that I think he was in his last year. Okay. I think he was on a decline offensively. Okay. And defensively, he he's, he's he will always be that stud. He was committing a lot of mistakes uh-huh. defensively. Um, you know, numbers don't lie. I think his his strikeout ratio was a little high for the number for the money he was asking for. Okay. Yeah. And you're like. Mm, doesn't make sense, right? You you own a baseball team. The guy's asking for all this money. You feel he's not complying or he's not producing, which would be the word. And you you got to think of the future, bro. You can't think of that moment. Yeah. You know, you got to think of the future. Uh, talking about that, switching mm-hmm. over to football. Yeah. Uh, you think we overpaid for Eddie Jackson? After this first game? I, uh, I think that it's uh, too soon. <laughs> ah, that's a good answer, man. God Everyone damn. has a bad day, right? Week 16. I think we all have a bad day, man. Yeah. I think we all have a bad day. Obviously, we, we saw what we saw, and everybody has their own conclusion when it comes to that. I think that uh, everybody's responsible right. for, for doing their job, and uh, I, I, I'm not the kind of person that like will hammer you after like but, you know, the first season, it was, it wasn't an easy thing to do, especially with the quarterback we were dealing with, somebody that we knew already, right? The Bears knew who this dude was, and vice versa. Uh, yeah, the Bears, but the yeah. thing is, he was in a whole different system. But we knew what this guy could do, right? So I think that it's uh, an opportunity to learn, and you learn from that. It's 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 game one. <laughs> Just don't make the same mistake again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How long would you take if you had uh, general manager powers or? owner powers or coach powers mm-hmm. to put in Justin Fields in your in your opinion? You know, it, it's tough because I think that uh, the kid that we drafted mm-hmm. is uh, physically gifted. Uh, he comes from a Big Ten school. Um, had a lot of success at the university that he played at. Um, but I think uh, there's a huge learning curve when it comes to the NFL because you're not playing versus college players. You're playing yeah. versus pros, dude. Pros. Um, we saw a little taste of what he can do with his legs, but what can he do, you know, passing the ball? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, it's, it's, you know, for example, there was a, the, the kid that's having success right now with the Kansas City Chiefs. Mahomes, he, yeah. yeah, he didn't start his first year. Like, right. he learned uh, from Alex, uh, Alex Smith. Alex Smith. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he was surrounded by a great coach as well, right? So um, it's, it's give or take, man. It's, it's, it's so difficult because you just never know. Like, we thought we had something in the quarterback that we had before. 
Right. Right. And then look at what he's doing now as a backup in yeah. Buffalo. Right. Buffalo, yep. Yeah. And he's having success there, which yeah. we didn't see when he was here. So it's it, it's hard, man. Um, you just you don't know. I just I I think that if if the results are not positive, there will, there will be a change for sure. And I think the uh, do you feel like there's added pressure just because you're in uh, you know the athletes are in such a big city like Chicago. Well, that's that's a great. Uh, thing you bring up, I think that when it comes to cities like Chicago, New, New York, York, yeah, or LA, the pressure is gonna like slam you. I mean, look at Javi Baez, right? Well, look at Mark Sanchez, man, when he was with the Jets, yeah, you know, in New York, the guy was a USC badass star. at USC yeah. star, and look at him, yeah, he's like a TV uh, analyst now, ESPN for, college, ES, yeah, yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. He had success like his second year with the Jets or something, or his first year or something like that. Yeah. He don't se quedó más. He ended up as a backup with uh, the team here in Chicago, right? And For he, a while. I think he also went to Arizona. I think. Yeah, he he with the I he think was he was with the around. Cowboys or something like that. Yeah. So I it's it's so hard, man, because that every year is different. Every year the the this this new pedigree of players comes in. Yeah. And they're they're a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot smarter. And you have to adapt to every year because the schemes and the strategies change every year, man. Yeah, I agree. Está cañón. Hell yeah. Mi compa, we're going to take also a shot before we uh, start wrapping it up, which okay. we, we call... You ran out um, of questions already? Damn. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I, I'm pretty sure we could have this conversation on for hours oh, and we hours. Could, we could go on forever. What What? What, what are your... Um, what, yeah, sure, why not? Aspirations oh, for the future? Yeah, what, what's uh, what's in for Omarcillo, El Gilguerillo, Omar Ramos? Uh, I think about getting my real estate uh, license, bro. And <laughs> <laughs> Start selling. Either yeah, that or I'm just I'm going to become a sales to... Uh, ¿Cómo dicen? Uh, doors to, door-to-door salesperson for... Uh, <laughs> Uh, la cerveza acá de mi compadre. Caso yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Buenas tardes, señores y señores. Este, ¿Le interesa una Or cerveza? Chef, no. ¿Usted tiene guaynos en su casa? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Le este, voy a presentar el four pack. <laughs> you know what? I, you know, it's, 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 it's funny. I, I wish I could answer that question. I, I, uh, it's like I see it like the, the stars at night when you see it. You see all these stars and you're like, you wonder how far every star is. This is where what I'm telling you right now. And, and that's the way that I see my future. Like, I, I, I don't know where it's going sometimes, man. Like, I, I, I know that things will conclude someday and will, will evolve to a way where I, I don't fit anymore. Right. So I need to jump the boat before that happens. Right. I don't know exactly what I do. I have thought about going back home and taking care of my mom. Um uh, ya está más mayor, ya más viejita. Uh, my dad decided to leave the United States and go back to Mexico. He has somebody take care, taking care of him now. Thank God, Maria, who's been a blessing in our lives. My parents decided to go different ways when my dad retired. Okay. Right? My mom was like, "No tengo nada en México." My dad was like, "We said we were going to retire and go to México." Cada quien fue por su lado. It was tough at the beginning, but uh, I stopped being selfish and understanding that cada quien tiene su vida que vivir. Mm-hmm. So my mom stayed behind, um, and I think about her a lot because she's alone. So I think yeah. about her. I think about her, and I've thought about going back to California. And I don't know what I would do, uh, especially in the area that we're in, because we're not in the Bay Area. We're not. It's, it's not a major market or anything like that. But I, I do believe in, in taking care of your parents, and um, so we'll see where it goes. I, I, um, I, I mean, there's just so many, so many questions. But I, I've, I'm happy for you that you've. Uh, Thank you, man. I, 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 I'm happy that you've maintained after so many it's years. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. It's not, not easy. easy. There's a lot of, like, uh, tongue biting. And you're like, <laughs> But you know what, man? Um, it is what it is. Life is a challenge every day. Yeah. You know, I wasn't born a millionaire. I, again, like I've always said, I, I was raised in the um, sacrifices, not the privileges. Um, but I'm happy to be alive. Uh, so much... Uh, tragic stuff has happened. So many people that I knew have passed um, because of, you know, COVID and um, other stuff like suicide and stuff like that, man. It's tough. My compadre uh, died a couple of um, uh, months ago. He Everything that was going on took a toll on him and he decided to take his life. And uh, it was tough on him. Because, it was tough on him and us. And then I've obviously I'm there for my hello now, Joshua. And um, I'm just, I just want to take this moment to, to, to say that, you know, life is a beautiful thing. I know it could be difficult for some people, um, but if anybody out there is feeling down, 
for whatever your reason may be, and if you're sick, if you're unhappy, you know, your life is meaningful and you should take the moment to really embrace that. It might be difficult for you to embrace that, but reach out. There's always somebody that cares about you enough for you to, you know, stick around and be alive. So, yeah. Any uh, short term, um, short term goals or yeah, I want to I want to uh, have some more of the tacos that they brought today. <laughs> yes, we got the microwave ready. Yes, yes. Yeah. shout out yeah. to that homie right there. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> what's your, what's your full name, by the way? El compa Jose Lopez. Lopez is your last name. Yes, sir. Y es el right. que mal. I, I never. I, <laughs> I, I've always wondered what his last name was. Oh, I was at his wedding, bro, and I forgot. Oh, it. I, I, that's I, I, even worse, man. You were at his wedding. You I, know his I, I, would call, I would call him Joselon. Like, be like Joselon, right? Joselon. Isn't that funny how we, if, if they're huge, yeah. tall? Josecito. Call, if they're small, they're Josecito. Yeah. Joselito. Joselito. But if they're big, Joselon. 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 No, but they, you know, thank you to Jose and, uh, you know, props to him to everything he's doing. Um, obviously, him and his brother and, uh, you know, his family and everybody. He's, he's uh, surrounded by a great group. And uh, he has vision, and uh, I hope he doesn't forget about the little people. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. When, he, when he buys, uh, you know, Arlington track, and he brings the, the bears in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're gonna that one. Bomb. But, that but, bomb. Yeah, but bomb. thank, thank bomb. you for the invite, and uh, thank you for the tacos, and thank you for being cool people, man. For any, sure. Any more plans uh, other than? Um uh, that, that you got in store that you could share with us? Or, okay. um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we'll be doing the uh, – I, I talked about this a little bit earlier today. Um, I'm happy to be part of the first broadcast on TV for the Chicago Red Stars. Nice. On the 25th of this month. Oh, shit. Uh, nice. Yeah, Unimas, Unimas and uh, Tudene, yeah. uh, 1200 AM Sports Radio with Raquel Ortiz. We'll be doing that broadcast, so if you guys want to – Check that out. Este, it'll be pretty cool. Um, I'm all about supporting our female uh, professionals, and um, that's the immediate. It's going to be at um, Soldier Field? Uh, no, it'll be – so uh, Las Red Stars continue to stay at SeatGeek. Oh, okay. Fire is at um, – uh, Soldier Field. Yeah, the yeah. professional yeah. soccer team <laughs> <laughs> is uh, still playing at uh, Soldier Field, and uh, our ladies are still at um, SeatGeek. Sorry, I'm, I'm not catching the just you can't. Mention it? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fine line. Para evitar, evitar cositas ahí. Okay. Pero este, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually, for people that didn't know this, uh, we have a soccer player, uh, two soccer players. That, they all stand out, of course, <laughs> but one of them is la esposa de J.J. Wyatt. No way. Yeah. And she's part of the Red Star. Oh, yeah. I did see that. that yeah, yeah. It there was, was a big rumor that he, they wanted to bring him to the Bears because yeah, because it, yeah, together. yeah. But he had uh, he he went out to uh, Arizona because there were some ex players, compañeros él from Texas that went to. Ah, okay. Yeah, Mr. Hopkins. Yeah, nice. Went, yeah, and so está ella ahí, y luego también está Katie Johnson, que fue jugadora de la selección mexicana de fútbol yeah. de México, oh, yeah. femenil de fútbol de México. Nice. Yeah. So, so yeah, man. It's like little little things that people don't know about, but yeah. I do my research on it, and um, and I think it's gonna be a special broadcast for sure. Cool. That is pretty cool, uh, man. Uh, go ahead, come back. No, no, I was just gonna say, I'm 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 actually very glad that you uh. Okay, I want to shout out my my compa Jose Lopez who uh. You know, Jose Lon. Jose Lon. Jose Lon. I'm gonna put that on my iPhone now. His name is Jose Lon. Jose Lon. Jose Lon. Jose Lon. Um, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> sí, porque él me dijo, you know what, hey, what do you think about Omar? Oh, can bring him on. Like, uh, Who's that dude? No, 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 we knew you <laughs> were, <bro>. un creído. <laughs> I'm like, let's bring him on porque, este, you know, I didn't know any of your background. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, I knew, uh, luego él me dijo, no, he's got a good story too. And, I, you know, I believe everybody's got a great story. You have yeah. a special one, man. I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you shared the, mm -hmm. you know, the growing up in, in the uh, in California. Campesino life, yeah. Campesino life. Mm -hmm. Um and then back then in the the racism, you know, that you went through, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, off off this uh, uh, recording or this uh, broadcast here, rather. Um, yeah, if you, I mean, if you want me to mention that real quick, este, yeah. I, I had never encountered uh, racism. I had no idea because, you know, my parents never brought it up. Um, they probably went through their experiences and they never wanted, they wanted to protect us from it. But there was this one time. Uh, when uh, the the Nintendo came out, right? Right. And uh, so I used to be that kid that would always ask his friends, "Can I borrow your Atari?" Right? Because the Atari was like the first one, the little joystick with the, yep. the orange with the button. button. Yep. Yeah, the yeah. orange button. 
And, uh, and I was happy with it, man. I was a little playing joust in Pac-Man. He told Roy, and I was like, this is life, bro. Con un morrillo, you, you're like happy as hell. There's nothing better in life than having a little arcade game. Yeah. Yep. So there was this kid named Jeremy uh, Mankins, quickly here. Is the, he, his grandmother uh, somehow adopted him, and she had all the money in the world. The parents had issues with drugs or something like that. And um, eh, le compró el primer Nintendo on the block, bro. So everybody was excited, right? And he was telling us, "My mom's gonna, my grandmother's gonna buy it, and she's we're gonna have the Super Mario Brothers, and then the duck, the duck game, duck hunt, duck hunt, yeah, con la pistolilla, el pinche yeah, perrillo, yeah, todo ese rollo." Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, everybody's excited, everybody's talking. Yeah, I'm gonna be first, and can I get seconds and thirds and fourths and give it, give up, poder tocar the actual little control oh. thing? So everybody goes inside the house, and I'm asked to stay outside. Uh. Yeah, the the grandmother said you can't come in, and I'm like, okay. Why not? And she's like, well, you can't come in. And then I asked Jeremy, and she's, and she's like, well, yeah, because you're, you're Mexican. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, I speak English. And she's like, well, yeah, she doesn't want you to come in. And I'm like, okay, can I still watch? And she's like, yeah, but through the window. And I was uh, like, and I was like, dude, but I was happy. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So then they're playing the, the Mike Tyson game, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was, uh, I, I had no idea what racism was or, preju- right. or being prejudiced versus someone, you know, and, and, and I was so happy until like a couple of years later uh, in high school, uh, a Filipino friend of mine uh, told me, said, hey, man, remember that one day? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, dude, they didn't want you because you were, you were brown because you're Mexican, cabrón. And I was like, oh, damn. And then it hit me right there like, wow, how can there be people so like pathetic like that, right? Yeah. Pero son cosas eh, que, que enseñanzas de la vida. Right, and I'm totally against that. You know, uh, that's why I have, when it comes to certain political issues and political people, I have my way of reacting towards it. Mm-hmm. And there's people that are against the way that I feel, but you know, uh, that's the beautiful thing about having your own opinion. So. Even even being uh, a public person, you, you, I, do you feel like you have that opinion? Porque, o sea, yeah, ya todos en Chile. And- no, oh. todos en Chile, and claro, claro. I don't think I'm very extreme, so I think uh, sometimes people kind of flow with me in a way okay but there are some things that uh i'm not down with man you know el maltrato hacia las personas right especialmente nuestra comunidad inmigrante i have an issue when people beat down on them you know what i mean i'm not saying that everybody is un angelito lo que tú quieras pero cuando gente habla más por hablar y no saben de qué están hablando mm. uh, i do raise my voice sometimes if it burns me enough i will but i try to stay out of the fight sometimes right. because of the position that i'm in y así las cosas. Oh, yeah. I like that. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? No, pues ahorita hay que, hay que tomarnos el shot. Ahora sí hay que tomarnos el shot. Yeah, yeah. Ya se durmió Joselón. Eh, Joselón. <laughs> so this shot, uh, this little segment that we came up with, it's called the shot for la positiva, because okay. we're very positive as well. La po- shot de la positiva. El, yeah, yeah. El, a, a salud de la positiva. So we want to thank you. Y pues thank un, you, man. Thank you for having me. Jesse's got a half, a half a cup over here. Well, Jesse's a big <laughs> dude, man. He's a big dude. aguanta. Saludos de la buena. Sponsored by Salud. Tres Generaciones. Yes, sir. Tequila. Shout Salud. out to them also. Saludos. Saludos. Salud. 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 Thank you. I appreciate this uh, social ah. distancing, by the way. So. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all vaccinated. Yeah. We're all good. Yeah, We're fully all good. vaccinated, by the way. Same here. Get your yep, third one if same. you can as well. So yeah. Booster shot. Booster shot, yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> Mi compa Jesse? Este, uh, it's always been an honor uh, working side by side, yeah. uh, you know, showing up to events and, and vice versa, you know. Oh, yeah, Omar. Whenever you Callate, güey. Nunca me saludas. Es lo que nos está diciendo, güey. Hey, Jesse. 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 Did you Jesse. tell him what the, before I got here? Did you tell him? I said, fucking Omar is going to be here. Fuck. No, I, I don't want him here. No, that's he, he, it's all good. It's all good. No, no. le puedes caer bien a todos, güey. Pero no, este. No, no, no. No, no. no. Hey, bro. Pero ¿quién siempre te saluda? ¿Quién siempre te saluda? You do. You do. Right? All the time. All the time. And, uh, if I'm walking uh, down, if uh, I'm walking down uh, Cermac, Cermac uh, Road anywhere, at Fiesta anywhere, del Sol, anywhere. if I'm in Joliet at Rancho no, Los Guzman, no, ¿quién te saluda, güey? It's you, brother. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because one time I was at, uh, I remember it was, uh, who did I go see? It was some place. Uh, it was dark as hell. It was on the second floor. And there was hardly no people there. It was a dark place, but I, I think um, ah, we went to go see those two guys. Ah, uh, uh, shit. Uh, they, they turned songs into cumbia. 
Oh, ouais. Los Master Plus, Los plus, Master plus, 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 plus. So, yeah. it, was, it was this dark place, weird, weird place, and there's nobody there, and I'm just getting to the bar, just chilling, and then you emerge from the freaking darkness. <laughs> What's up, Jesse? I'm like, oh, shit, where'd you go? <laughs> Wait, bro, you have, you have some massive short-term memory issues, bro, because I just saw you the other day, and you don't remember that, bro. but you remember that from like five <laughs> years ages, ago, bro. Ages. Nah, nah. But anywhere, anywhere where you're at, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always... Uh, I'm always happy, especially yeah. cuando, cuando yeah. te presento con la familia, because yeah. my dad's a big sports fan right now. And I know he is. Yeah, like, you know that guy you listen to in Spanish? This is the guy talking. That's him. <laughs> That's yeah, him. right there. And, it's either Miguel uh, or I. Yeah, one of yeah. the two. No, shout so, out to Miguel Esparza. Shout out to Miguel Esparza. Miguel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, este, I, I'm proud of your accomplishments. I'm yeah. proud that I was able to see it firsthand. Yeah. I was proud to be part of the same team at, yeah. at a certain time that we we're part of a radio station. We we're yeah. part of uh, the same flag. Uh, we're still part of that same flag yeah. because, you know, uh, of the industry. And I just appreciate what you've done for Chicago, the the Latino community yeah. uh, that you keep on doing. You, you just... Uh, you're. It, it, I don't want to say that you're a locutor because uh-huh. you. I hate you're that a, term. By the yeah, way, yeah, you're a man of many <laughs> yeah. talents. I'm a communicator, but you're you a, you're a person that has always kept it fresh, and, and yeah. uh, you, nobody can deny that. Nobody yeah. can take it away from you because you sound good on radio. Thank you. You look great. You look good on TV. Yeah, and it, it's just like, hey, I'm happy that I could say I know that guy. You know, it's funny because I, I feel the same way, man. Every time I see you on the stage at, like, uh, festivals and you're on the stage. Jamming. And I'm sorry. I saw the text message afterwards. Yeah, But he's like, wait, I'm like, right. un saludo. Like, Send me un saludo. Un saludo. I, I, was, I, was, uh, I had a couple of drinks in my system already, but este, I'm, I'm glad to see when you're doing your activations out in the streets and the festivals, and I'm like, uh, like I'll be with, like, whoever's, whatever girlfriend I have at that time. Oh, I like no. that. Yes. Damn. 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 No, because the, the, the last person I saw you with, she had a really strong, firm handshake. I was like, ah, yeah, ah, she works out, bro. Ah, she works ah, out. Ah, ah, pero si es, pero si, pero si es chava, güey. Si es chava, chava. <laughs> I was like, de It's like a little ranch. God, like, hey. Yeah, yeah, but she she works out, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember her waking up like at four in the morning to go to the How gym. How you doing? I was like, I'm, like, ah, I'm, like, ah. I'm, like, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going to the gym at four in the morning? What the hell? She's stronger than I am, bro. Pero este, yeah, but you know what, man? I uh, Thank you for those words, Jesse. Right. Este, congratulations on the success that you're having. Uh, te llaman por algo, bro. Le, tú tienes to, you have your equity in the community. And uh, it's como todos, bro. We all have to make an effort to to stay alive and and, and stay afloat and trabajar para comer, we. Right. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's where we're at, man. Me compa fry. Um, I know we barely met today, uh-huh. but I mean, I've heard about you. You're a celebrity here in Chicago, I would say. Um, but don't look at me that way, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Look at me like one of your, like, uh, if we can, like, kick off a friendship. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, sure. for sure. Yeah, 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 that'd be great. Este, but it's a, it's still an orgullo to like, hear the story of, you know, your background and how you became. And to tell the people that watch, you know, there's, there's a voice beside, you know, behind, you know, there's a person behind that voice yes. that you, they hear. And, you know, to, to hear that upbringing where it brought you to now. Yeah. Like, maybe you'll inspire somebody. They'll, you know, probably see you as a, a sportscaster or someone yeah. now and be like, oh, this person is going to be. And, you know, and, that's, and that's what I'm all about right now. Thank yeah, you for exactly. mentioning that, man. That's what I'm all about right now. Uh, I've done a lot of pep talks at the schools. I've gone to schools, bro, when there's like little chavitos that are hungry that didn't, you know, go to school with a breakfast. Yeah. And that hurts me, man. That breaks my heart. Um, and and I remember be, uh, going to Romeoville one time and, <coughs> and telling them and talking to them about my story about being bullied for being a campesino kid. And some mm-hmm. little kid came up to me. He's like, I get bullied all the time. Bro, I almost like cried right there in front of him. And, uh, you know, but he said that he felt like there was hope for him. Yeah. You know, exactly. yeah. that, hey, if, there's, if Omarcillo got through it, so can I. Yeah. And that's who I am today. That's exactly. what I believe in being. I, I don't care about being rich or having money, bro. I, I, all I care about right now is being able to take care of my mom and my dad, taking care of my daughter, being able to pay the home that I live in, mm-hmm. and just being the good person, bro. Honestly. Yeah. Honestamente, la única cosa que me importa, I see everything in social media, man. I see what everybody has, y que el caballo, y que la mesa, y que la botella, y que las rosas, y que las viejas, y lo que tú quieras. 
But that, that I don't I don't gravitate to that, man. Yeah. I just want to be a good person because I feel that someday when I'm not here, I think I'm going to stand before God and he's going to ask me like, what did you do with your life, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? I get you. And that's what I believe in. Honestly, yeah. I'm telling you right now. I Yeah, I like to drink tequila and, and <laughs> I like to hang out and I like to date women and stuff like that. But I'm, I just try to be a good person, man. That's, that's where all, I'm at right now. That's where it matters. That's where I it matters. Think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, El like, Caballo, they're buying <laughs> bottles, but then they're complaining about $4 tacos. Exactly. I, exactly. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> had to throw the jab in there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, it happens, man. It happens. Yeah. Bro, on my end, uh, igual, o sea, I, I, we had, I had seen you uh, a few times, you know, Probably here, La here Musicada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Este, but I was, uh, I was very anxious uh, to hear your story. To hear everything, uh, I didn't know you were involved in so many of the, the sports and, yeah. you know, everything. So that, you know, I'm a big sports guy. Uh, but I think that after right now, the, the one thing that really resonates and, and I take away with me is uh, you you reaching out to the schools and you talking yeah. to the kids, yeah. uh, uh, bullying, you know, because I think that in our Mexican community, it's it's almost taboo still yeah. to talk about the bullying and to talk about... Yeah. Uh, you know, depression and whatnot, yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. everything that we can, mental, mental health. health, right? Mental I had health. a bad, man. Yeah. I had a bad, I had a bad, uh, coming from a humble background. Then when I was in junior high, I had like an acne problem going on. You know, my hormones were getting all stupid with me and stuff. And uh, I was very insecure, man. I right. was very insecure. When you're insecure, you're very vulnerable, right? Yeah. Cualquier uh, persona te puede decir cualquier pendejada y te la crees. Yeah. And you just, you just like, you didn't want to go home. You didn't want to eat. You want to go to school the next day. And that was me, man. That was me. I used to pray for summer break to show up, man. You know, because... Just to be done with school. Yeah, just to be still... Yeah. I used to pray for pro wings to go in style, bro, because my my parents didn't buy me Nikes or Reeboks, bro. Right. I used to pray, like, please mm. let Pele Shoe Store be popular, you know? Yeah. Este, and it was that bad. But you know what? Uh, I had two hardworking parents that showed a little or enough affection towards us to make us believe like life was worth it. Right. And, um, and that's why I, I give back to them. You know, yeah. I, I've always believed in honoring your father and your mother. I was talking to Jesse uh, before this uh, broadcast that we're doing, how he po- he posted a video where he was taking care of his pops. And there was this video he posted um, where he was uh, shaving his dad. Right. And it just like, it, I fell to my knees, man. Like, I, I bawled, bro. I bawled because mm. he had that opportunity for him. And I know what it what he was probably going through because I wish I could... My dad's maybe not in that, like, physically in that stage in his life. Right. But I wish I could do something for my dad. My dad's in Mexico. Right. But I was like, man, you know, there, I'm, I'm not alone. You know, Jesse's doing that for his pops. He believes whatever... Aside from whatever relationship you have with your dad... I had a difficult with my dad. We bumped it. We bumped it heads a lot, man. We bumped heads a lot. Um, because me gustaba mucho. There's that Midwest thing. The yeah, bumped it, it, exactly. bumped it, it, yeah, it. I bumped it, 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 it. <laughs> este, pero, you know, um, but it was it was a beautiful thing to see, and I believe in endorsing that, and uh, I commend you again, Jesse, for doing that. Oh, no, thank I, you, I thank see, you. I see you. You know, I saw the I saw you the other day at that one um event, you know, in Joliet, and you were like pushing your dad's uh, wheelchair, man. And that says a lot about you, man. And I re- that's those are the people that I respect. So um, we're only alive once, man. And and we got we just got to make the best of our lives, make our parents proud, and just be the best human beings that we can be. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. man. Well, thank you very much for coming, man. Um, like my compa said, honestly, like in in our eyes, you know, I know Jesse knows you, but in our eyes, mm-hmm. you are like a celebrity. You know. We, you're Omar Ramos, like mm-hmm. for us, you're Om- the Omar Ramos. Yep. And to sit here and, and hear you speak the way you do puts everything in perspective. To say cool. well, you're just like like all of us and yeah, everyone yeah, who's yeah. listening and watching and and uh, your priorities and and your morals are yeah. where they're supposed I to be. I watch at. El Chavo del Ocho just like you. There do. you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, we do want to thank you, man, from from all of us. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Los charros. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Charros. yeah. By the way, this is my favorite uh, Mexican baseball team. There you go. If you guys have never been to a uh, Winter baseball team in December. Do it. You'll have a good time. <laughs> there you go. Kawamas is big. <laughs> <laughs> Mis compas, muchísimas gracias. Please claro, subscribe man. to our YouTube channel, El Wagpad. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Great episode with my guy, Omar Ramón. Hell you know. yeah. Ya se la saben. La pura positiva, viejones. Puro Bridgeport. Agua. El 
Wattpad. Este episodio está patrocinado por nuestros compas de Casa Humilde Cervecería. Cerveza artesanal, elaborada aquí en Chicago, with a variety of 10 different styles to choose from. Casa Humilde is located at the District Brew Yards, 417 North Ashland in Chicago. Follow them on IG and like them on Facebook at Casa Humilde Cervecería. To check availability near you, go to www.casahumildechicago.com and check out the store locator. You could also pick up some chelas at the District Brew Yards. Casa Humilde Cervecería. Stay humilde. This Walk Pod episode is brought to you by Borja's Law Group. El abogado Borjas contestará todas tus preguntas, explicará el proceso específico de inmigración que aplica en su caso, el tiempo que se toma procesar su caso y los costos asociados con las tarifas de inmigración y los honorarios legales. Llama al 312-788-2783 para programar tu cita. Y ahí de pasada, menciona el WACPAR para que te den tu consulta gratis. Este episodio está patrocinado por Tequila Tres Generaciones. At Tres Generaciones, we honor those driven to create something greater than themselves, those who have what it takes to leave a legacy. It's a tequila for the strivers, the hustlers, the champions of free will who create their destiny and don't await it. El proceso es único. It begins with fresh pressing agave, extrayendo el jugo antes que lo cocinen, resulting in reduced bitterness and a crisp agave forward flavor. Todo el tequila is triple distilled. Using 100% Blue Weber agaves. Con el tequila blanco, con el tequila reposado, it's certified organic. Aquí en el Wackpad, cuando hacemos un brindis, it has to be tequila tres generaciones. Celebrate responsibly. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021 Salsa Tequila Import Company. Chicago, Illinois. El Wackpad is brought to you by your friends from Stitch and Studio. They are a 100% family-owned business that dedicates itself to fulfilling their customers' custom embroidery needs. They're a one-stop marketing shop for all your apparel needs. He transfer vinyl, screen print t-shirts, or every type of hat for your business or sporting team. Sports bags, and to make matters better, they help you establish your brand, be it in the music business or personal business. They're here to make it happen. Go follow them on Instagram at Stitchin' Studio and like them on Facebook. For any questions, price, quotes, just tell them that the Wackpot sent you at 773-418-4484. And also, AMG. Aguacate Music Group is your one-stop shop for all your music needs. Cuenta con todos los servicios de música en vivo, DJs, iluminación, pantallas, photo booths, and more para tu próximo evento. For all the musicians out there, AMG also offers graphic designs, photo shoots, live videos, and rehearsal rooms. So go like them on Facebook at Aguacate Music Group or on IG at Aguacate Records. You can call and book your next session at 773-301-9083.